Tonight, it's Goliath against Goliath, number one against number one, superstars against superstars, and defending state champion against defending state champion. The Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears paying a visit to Dyke New Hartford High School, making the two plus hour road trip tonight to face off against the Dyke New Hartford Wolverines. Good evening, everyone. Tyler Lance with you here on Hometown Radio, KLGA, and the Algona Radio YouTube stream as we have a highly anticipated contest coming up tonight. The number one ranked team in Class 2A against the number one ranked team in Class 1A as Dyke New Hartford comes in a perfect 19-0. They have won 26 consecutive games since losing at the end of the regular season last year against Bishop Garrigan. But tonight, they get to be the home team tonight. They get to welcome the likes of Molly Joyce and Audie Crooks inside of their gymnasium, welcoming the 19-1 Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears, currently ranked number one in Class 1A. And Coach Schwab for Bishop Garrigan always talks about sharpening up his team, giving them challenges throughout the season. And there's not much of a bigger challenge than going up against a team that has won back-to-back -back state championships in Class 2A with the Wolverines, and I'm certainly Coach Dahl of Dyke New Hartford feels the same way, getting his girls tested before the playoffs roll around coming up here very, very shortly. So it should be a fantastic game tonight. All kinds of superstars on the floor, a ton of talent, and two teams that are gearing up for deep playoff runs, looking to end their season at Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. We'll get to the interviews from both head coaches coming up before tonight's game. Head Coach Brandon Schwab of the Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears and Head Coach Bruce Dahl of the Dyke New Hartford Wolverines. It'll be after this as we give a quick thank you to our video streaming sponsors here on the YouTube page, including Algona State Farm Insurance agent Billy Offerman, Kemna Auto Center, where it's not just about the car, it's about the care, Algona Municipal Utilities, where they are community-owned for community benefit, and High Endeavors, proud supporter of Bishop Garrigan Athletics. We will take this quick time out here from a couple of our sponsors and check in with both head coaches ahead of tonight's game on Hometown Radio KLGA and the Algona Radio YouTube live stream. High School Sports on Hometown and Home Country Radio, brought to you by these sports club members. American Glass, for all your glass needs, think American. Farm Bureau Financial Agents, Dave Beisch, Jason Brace, Daniel Foth, and Michael Tull. Chemco Tires, they're all you need to know about tires and service. Weikert Realtors, the 515 agency, a fresh approach to real estate. Feed Mill Coffee Company, where community connects. Iowa Lakes Community College, your community, your college. PMC Advantage Insurance Services, insuring our neighbors for over 80 years. Walker Chiropractic and Wellness, caring for Algona, Sway City, and the surrounding areas with chiropractic, nutritional, and physical therapy services. All proud sponsors of this broadcast. At Security State Bank, we realize each customer has a unique set of needs and goals. That's why we place a greater value on providing outstanding customer service. All products and services are designed for customers within our local community. We value each customer that walks through our door and wants to give them the personalized attention they deserve. Find out why Security State Bank in Algona, Burt, and Laverne is your partner in community banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Security State Bank. With over a decade of experience, Jake Ingalls Electric is here to handle any electrical job you could possibly have. From anything agricultural related to complex commercial wiring to something simple like installing a new outlet in your home, Jake Ingalls Electric does it all. Have your wiring done right and call Jake at 515 320 4286. Jake Ingalls Electric, shockingly good service. For over 40 years, Northwest Iowa Bone, Joint, and Sports Surgeons have maintained one mission to provide excellence in orthopedic care. Their team of nine physicians offer specialized care in everything from arthroscopic same-day surgery to joint replacement as well as hand and foot surgery and have an orthopedic surgeon on call 24-7. Healthcare isn't about appointments, it's about taking care of people, and that's their specialty. Visit Northwest Iowa Bone Joint and Sports Surgeons on the web at nwiabone.com. And a big night of high school basketball action is getting rolling right now on Hometown Radio KLGA as Bishop Garrigan visits Dyke New Hartford. Right now we're talking with Golden Bear head coach Brandon Schwab. And coach, the regular season is finally winding down here with a game that has been highly anticipated for quite a while as you guys face the defending 2A state champions in tonight's matchup. First of all, you know, I would imagine there's maybe a few more nerves for the players than maybe the average night. So how do you expect them to kind of work through maybe those early game nerves in tonight's matchup? 
about the nerves is it's a matchup that our backs aren't against the wall and uh, we get we get to survive another day you know I mean so I mean it uh, nerves are a part of the game nerves mean you're usually ready to play um, I mean nerves are completely we talk about it all the time in big games it's, nerves is common you know I mean we've we've got to do make sure we come out play fast early, play with a sense of urgency, and nerves will take care of themselves. But, I mean, that butterflies in the locker room in a big game, I would say everyone, including the coaching staff, will have that going. You know, I mean, it's a big game. It's, uh, you know, it's a game that's going to challenge us in many ways, and uh, we're just excited for the opportunity to play such a great team as Dyke. And, Coach, you played back-to-back games a few times this season, and you'll be doing that again tonight. What have you seen from your teams on the second night of back-to-backs so far this year, and what's the key to coming out really strong when you are on the second night of back-to-back games? You know, mental toughness is a big part of it on back-to-back nights, you know, and, and uh, you know, we talked in the locker room last night after the game, hey, if we're going to have a chance to win a state championship, it's going to come on a back-to-back night. We're going to play a Friday, we're going to play a Saturday. And uh, there's no excuses. You've got to get yourself refocused. You've got to make sure that uh, – you're locked in in the locker room. You're ready to uh, go on the bus ride. You're ready to uh, uh, be ready to uh, compete for 32 minutes. This is uh, both of our 21st games or 20th games of the season, and uh, I would like to say both teams are in, in game-like condition, conditioning right now. And, uh, you know, we just got to be mentally tough in the locker room, be ready to go right off the bat, and uh, be ready to be the aggressor tonight and not, not let them be the aggressor. And, Coach, last season, at the end of the regular season, you also faced Dyke New Hartford as you guys picked up a 50-45 to win last year. What role did you feel last year's final game of the season against Dyke New Hartford played in preparing your team for the playoffs and really getting them geared up for that state title run? Yeah, you know, uh, without a doubt, I thought last year, you know, when we, we had beat Dyke, I mean, I, I really think our players thought we were uh, good before the game. And uh, I really think that that put our mindset into, you know, we're, we're really going to uh, – have a chance to win a championship this year, or compete for one, and uh, you know, uh, you know, our mindset um, is the same this year. The only difference is, I think our players know right now uh, we're a team that can compete for a state championship, and uh, you know, our job is to come out and uh, make sure we're ready to go right off of the bat tonight. And and our mindset is, is you know, we know Dyke is very good, but uh, so are we, and uh, we're going to do everything we can to uh, put them in some matchup problems get the pace of the game the way we want it, and it should be just a fun night of basketball for anyone watching or coming to the game tonight. When you look at Dyke New Hartford, what are a couple of things that stand out to you on film about them? You know, the experience they have, the length. I mean, they're going to go 6'1", 6'1", 6'0", 5'10". I mean, that length we don't see, and there's not another team in 1A that's going to present, present uh, the challenge of the length that Dyke gives us. You know, we're... We're obviously a man-to-man team for the most part all the time. They present us with a lot of matchups, especially with our uh, um, our two huge freshmen that come off of the bench and their height. Uh, I mean, going man against them uh, the entire game is going to cause us some matchup problems. So, uh, I mean, we're, we're going to have to mix things up. And, uh, there's no doubt. I don't think we can go into the game and just say come with one game plan and uh, – expect uh, us to do that all night long they're going to adjust and uh, we've got to adjust and uh, we, you know we just got to be ready to uh, um, uh, adjust to different defenses that uh, we need to throw at them to be successful tonight and coach like you said Dyke New Hartford is a team that will bring great length into the game and especially talking about the guard position you'll be seeing some bigger guards than really you've seen throughout the season when you're talking about playing 1A teams and playing in the top of Iowa West so when it comes to dealing with their length how do you try to coach your girls through that or go about that tonight uh, you know what gets us beat is threes and uh, what challenges us in games when other teams you go out and hit eight to ten threes that 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 hurts us so we've got to stay disciplined and trusting that our help's going to be there trusting that our weak side is going to be there and uh, um, we've got to make sure it's there and Audie's going to be a rim protector for us. You know, uh, um, if we trust each other and we can trust that our guards are going to close with high hands and our guards are going to make sure that uh, we're, we're not going to give deep threes off and, uh, and and our guards trust Audie that she's going to be a rim protector for us and our weak side and our guards are going to get the front and the post and, you know, all those things that uh, – um, need to be successful. It's going to be a team effort to, to be able to try to contain Dyke tonight. Uh, it just can't be on Audie or on Molly or on Abby. It's it's going to be a team effort of how we defend. And uh, we've got to have a lot of trust in each other and uh, make sure that uh, we execute a game plan. 
Coach, as we wrap up for today, what's going to be the final message you tell to the girls before tonight's game tips off? Make sure we get to every 50-50 ball. Make sure that uh, we set the tone with our talk on the defensive end and make sure we run the floor. You know, if we do those, you know, a lot of nerves solve themselves early if you come in with a mindset of just, I am going to play harder than this team the first three minutes of the game. And I'm going to make sure every loose ball that uh, we, we get the first three minutes of the game, if we can set that tone early, nerves go away, and you get into a basketball game, and then we, it's going to come down to execution. So I just want to see us play harder than them the first three minutes of the game and really set that tone. Coach, best of luck in tonight's game, and thank you very much for joining today. Thanks, Tyler. That is Bishop Garrigan head coach Brandon Schwab on the pregame show. We'll take a timeout and bring you closer to tip-off next on Hometown Radio KLGA. More sports club members making these broadcasts possible on Hometown and Home Country Radio. Reeb's Wicked Good Bar and Grill. For wicked good food, drinks, and service, you got to go to Reeb's. CB Grain Solutions, satisfaction guaranteed. New Way k Co-op, delivering exceptional value through knowledge and innovation. Dump it. They do the dirty work so you don't have to. Albert Electric. Flip the switch to Albert Electric. Grassmasters, growing satisfied customers. Greg Penny and Company CPA, certified public accountants, where everyone counts. Yemblin Builders and Apartments, quality apartments for rent, beauty and craftsmanship that will never go out of style daylight donuts open early with delicious donuts and great coffee all sponsors of this broadcast when you need cash on the go there's no need to pay a surcharge fee with money pass iowa state bank is proud to be part of the money pass network of surcharge free atms found nationwide look for the green and blue money pass symbol on over 32,000 atms across the nation or find an atm near your vacation spot or travel destination at moneypass.com money pass another way that iowa state bank helps people succeed member fdic More sports club members making these broadcasts possible on Hometown Home Country Radio. Kasuth Regional Health Center, make KRHC your home for health care. North Iowa Appliance Center, Highway 18 East Algona, where they sell the best and service the rest. Tom Eichen Sales, your store in the country, Highway 18 West. Algona Plumbing and Heating, where a good flush always beats a full house. Runky Brothers Full Service, experience the Runky Brothers difference for all of your auto service and repair needs. Purpleding and Boyd CPAs, they're not just about taxes. Purpleding Excavating Enterprise, let them take care of your grading, excavating, and drainage needs. Hi B, use the Fuel Saver card, fill your cart, fuel your car. AK's Chrome Kitchen, when you come in, your family. All sports club members bringing you this broadcast. I loved playing high school sports. I loved the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, all the pageantry, and I wanted to keep playing. But I graduated. No colleges called and neither did the pros. So, to stay close to the game I loved, I decided to become a high school official. You know, a referee. When I played high school sports, I learned the importance of integrity, good sportsmanship, and respect for the rules. Now as a high school official, I get to help model these same values to others. Maybe the colleges and the pros didn't call, but the kids in Iowa did. And now, I'm enjoying the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, and all the pageantry of high school sports all over again. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. High School Sports on Hometown and Home Country Radio. Brought to you by these sports club members. Farmer State Bank is proud to be a part of our community for over 125 years with offices in Algona, Whittemore, and West Bend. Phil's Auto and Truck Repair. Service is the difference. Trend Salon, your complete family hair salon. It's all about you. Oak Crest Funeral Services, celebrating a life lived. Lusher Family Dentistry, serving your family since 1965 on Call Street in Algona. Algona Frame and Auto Body, collision specialist, a total commitment to excellence. Water Connection, from softeners to bottled water and service, call 295-SOFT. Algona Pizza Ranch, there's so much to love. Stroman Dental, giving you something to smile about. All bringing you this game on the radio. And we're getting 
set for high school basketball action here on Hometown Radio KLGA. It's the Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears visiting Dyke New Hartford tonight. And right now we're talking with Dyke New Hartford head coach Bruce Dahl. Coach, first of all, thank you very much for joining today. Uh, let's just start off here with a quick recap of your team's season. You guys have got off to a 19-0 start. You have the number one ranking in Class 2A. Playoffs are coming up very soon. So overall, where do you feel your team is at right now as far as playoff readiness and being in a position to try to defend the state title? Yeah, I think we're in a good good position. Our girls work pretty hard and, and take everything pretty serious. And, you know, there's some areas that we had to work on uh, to get to where we're at now, and that's our bench play and, uh, you know, and shoot free throws better. Um, and, you know, the free throws could be a little bit better, but we've definitely improved our bench play. So, you know, it's just a matter of fine-tuning at this point, and, and that's why we, you know, got this game on here tonight. And, Coach, it's definitely a very unique game. The Class 1A state champion, Bishop Garrigan, against the two-time 2A class state champion, back-to-back with you guys, Dyke New Hartford. So this was something you guys did last year at the end of the regular season as well as you visited Bishop Garrigan that time. Did you feel last year's game at all played a role in preparing your team for the playoffs and really getting them that readiness to go after that state title? Yeah, definitely. You know, anytime you can play a, a quality team like uh, Bishop Garrigan, it's, it's only going to make you better, win, win or lose. And, you know, we happened to take the loss last year. But, you know, it, it just felt like it was a win as far as um, getting us ready to <clears throat> make that run and, and win a state championship last year. And so I feel the same thing as I did uh, last year at this point and probably the same feelings that, uh, you know, um, I'm excited about all the great athletes that are going to be on the floor. And I'm excited about um, just, you know, the competition and them coming on over to our our side of the state and uh you know so people can can see what you know we have and and they can see what bishop garrigan has and it's just gonna be a fun atmosphere and coach we have a lot of bishop garrigan fans obviously listening to the broadcast tonight and one thing we talk about with the golden bears a lot is just they have a lot of blowouts so they have to find a way to stay sharp throughout the regular season with that being the case and really that's the case for you guys as well you've had many commanding wins throughout the season where your team just really blew it open early in the ball game so with that being said how do you make sure the team stays sharp on nights where really you kind of have those one-sided victories yeah you know there's a a time for uh, focusing in. There's a time for, you know, being a little bit more loose and everything. Our girls have that, that balance where they know. You know, our girls are, are so competitive that and so experienced that they that they know on their own, I honestly believe. And, you know, sometimes it takes a little reeling in at times. But, you know, they know, you know, what the goals are. They know what the, the prize is at the end if they can play to their potential. And, you know, they, they take things pretty – you know, to heart when it comes to, to competition and trying to do what's right to put themselves in position to win. You know, everything that we do is to put us into position to win. And so, you know, I, I feel like they, they do that. Obviously, you have a lot of the same faces you had on the team from the past two state title runs, but, you know, each season is its own story and journey in itself. So, with that being said, do you feel this team has experienced any unique challenges or overcome them that maybe the past two haven't or anything, I guess, unique about this year's team? We're different as far as that. Um, you know, going into the season, we have we have a quality starting five. I mean, we we have uh, our our position one's a six foot one guard who's started off as a post as a freshman, and she's worked her way all the way to a point guard. Um, that's pretty unique. Uh, we have a two that is going to you and I, and, and the and the point guard's going to play at William Mer- William Jewell in uh, down Kansas area, and then uh, we have a, a two that's going to play uh, soccer at you and I. And, you know, she's been on, on the varsity since her freshman year. And then our three came off the bench, and she could have started on any team. And I just say she had seven three-pointers the other night. And uh, she's a six-foot-one shooting uh, guard. She's kind of a three. And then our four, we decided to use – she's only 5'8", but we decided to use her as a four because she can rebound and finish at the hoop really well. And that's Jaden Peterson. Um, the three was Martin Bixby. The two with Camille Lanford, if I didn't say their names. And then our uh, um, our five, then, is Peyton Peterson, um, who, you know, was uh, you know, now been twice um, captain of the all-tournament team and, you know, has put up some great numbers. And where she's gotten better at, to be honest with you, is, is her dribbling ability. And, and, and we, you know, kind of started out playing five out. And she used to be a block-to-block her freshman year. And now she just improved her game so much, too. So our five are pretty solid. It's, it's, you know, getting that bench to, to tie things together. 
Absolutely. And coach, obviously you saw Bishop Garrigan last year at the end of the regular season. You've had the weekend to kind of look over the Golden Bears and scout them a little bit as well coming in to this game. So what stands out to you on film when you look at this year's edition of Bishop Garrigan? Yeah, you know, it's 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 the same as, as last year, but different. I mean, they, they brought in a couple new players, but the system hasn't changed as far as what they're trying to do. Um, you know, Molly Joyce will, will kill you from the outside, and her penetration will 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 kill you. And and then you got uh, Audie Crooks, obviously, who's going to Iowa State, um, who's getting those passes and getting herself set up on that block. And I, I've seen that she's you know testing her range a little bit, you know, kind of stepping out a little bit from that block and doing some things as well. So that makes her even tougher. Um, but it's it's you know people people you know, say well. You know, are you going to double team her? <laughs> well, yeah, we're going to do the best we can, but that's it's not as simple as double teaming Audie Crooks, and um, and it's not as simple as like okay, double team Audie Crooks and just pay attention to Joyce. It's not that easy because the other players are very very good players. You know, the Capricious Girl, she's a heck of a rebounder, and she's been with them the all the whole time. And they got some good you know freshmen that, that came in and shoot the ball very well. So <clears throat> it, it pose a big challenge because they have multiple threats and. If you try to take away one thing, you're going to get burned on the other. And, um, so that's that's the ultimate challenge for uh, the game. Coach, as we wrap up, along those same lines, what do you feel are maybe one or two factors that will really be the deciding factors in this ball game? Yeah, I, I think number one, rebounding. Um, I, I think that's the key to the game. If, if you know, if, if we can can rebound the ball, and then who can rebound better? You know, um, that that's going to be a big storyline. <laughs> And then I, I just feel like <clears throat> we're not going to be able to stop them on, you know, every trip, obviously. Um, but we got to get, you know, three stops in a row or we got to get, you know, th- four stops in a row. And then we got to score. So I believe our ability to score and our ability to rebound are going to be two keys. Because um, if we're not if we're not scoring and we're not rebounding, that's not going to be a good combination. Well, Coach, thank you very much for the time today and best of luck in tonight's game. I appreciate it. Thank you. That is Dyke New Hartford head coach Bruce Dahl here on the pregame show as we will take a timeout and bring you more next on Hometown Radio KLGA. More sports club members making these broadcasts possible on Hometown Home Country Radio. Algona Livestock Sales. Sales every Monday. Countryside Barbecue Sauce. Two sauces for all seasons. Farm and Home Services. View their listings at farmhomeservices.com. Holmes Animal Clinic. Animals large and small. They love them all. Sign Works. For all your signage needs as well as printed shirts, caps, and jackets. Stop in or call 295-9544. Style Salon. Your salon in Algona. Create yourself. Dance Connection and Tumbling by Michelle. Passionate about teaching, creative about dance. Visit their studio or danceconnectionbymichelle.com. TAFE Wellness Center in Algona and Armstrong. Keeping athletes in the game with chiropractic care. Take charge of your health. All proud sponsors of this broadcast. At Security State Bank, we realize each customer has a unique set of needs and goals. That's why we place a greater value on providing outstanding customer service. All products and services are designed for customers within our local community. We value each customer that walks through our door and wants to give them the personalized attention they deserve. Find out why Security State Bank in Algona, Burt, and Laverne is your partner in community banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Security State Bank. Approaching tip-off here on Hometown Radio KLGA and the Algona Radio YouTube live stream as we are just over six minutes away from the start of tonight's basketball action. And what a match we have for you tonight. The Dyke New Hartford Wolverines, number one in Class 2A against the Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears, number one in Class A for the second year in a row. I'm Tyler Lance alongside my partner Beanie Bodie. And Beanie, first of all, what a venue for tonight's game. A huge cavernous gymnasium, a brand new gym for the Dyke New Hartford High School, college-sized basketball courts, really nice facility here. Here and what a great scene for a game tonight. Beautiful gymnasium, and you said it, Tyler. College-sized court, so there's a few more feet going up and down tonight. The JV girls just experienced a good workout because they were doing lots of up and down in the previous game. And, yes, brand-new facility here in Dyke. 
for the Dyke New Hartford Wolverines. We parked in the back parking lot, had to walk about a half a mile to find the new gym. And it is cavernous indeed, Tyler. It's uh, uh, these new facilities. You can tell they've all brought in the architects and these architects know what they're doing because it's a nice setup. There is plenty of room. There's bleachers all the way around this court. This has got to be maybe the biggest two-way school in the state. No doubt about it, as Dyke New Hartford gets to host this time around. They had to come all the way to Algona, Iowa to face Bishop Garrigan last year, and that was a 50-45 to 45 win by the Golden Bears. But last season, it was a well-played game between these two teams, a game that really lived up to expectations, and a game that really prepared these teams for the playoffs. And I love to see two head coaches that have the same philosophy. You know what? We're going to play a difficult non-conference schedule. We want to win a state championship. That means that we need to play a tough schedule during the regular season and get our girls geared up and ready to go when the playoffs roll around. Coach Schwab, of course, has done that for Bishop Garrigan. Coach Dahl for Dyke New Hartford doing it as well. And really, it paid dividends for these teams last year. They both ended up winning a state championship. And, you know, it's not all just about one game at the end of the regular season that sets it up. But, boy, playing a tough team like this in a playoff atmosphere really sets the tone for a deep playoff run. You know, I think so. And I don't disagree with you, Tyler. But that was last year. These teams both went on to win a state championship. Now I think that these teams have played each other before. And I'm watching the girls warm up right now. And you can say what you want about getting sharp before the, before the uh, tournament begins and everything, but boy, in this gym right now, these two teams want to beat each other. This is an undefeated Dyke New Hartford team and Bishop Garrigan with a one loss to a really good uh, Twin Cities team. Like, you do not want to be the team that leaves this gym with an L. And I think this has got to be a hotly contested contest. And some of the key players in tonight's game, of course, for Bishop Garrigan, you have two college commits in the starting lineup. Ani Crooks committed to Iowa State, averaging just under 32 points per game this season as Crooks is 16 points away from moving into the top five in the all-time scoring list in Iowa girls high school basketball. She'll be a big factor tonight. And of course, her longtime battery mate, Molly Joyce, leading the state in assists. She's committed to the Truman State Bulldogs, and she'll be a big factor in tonight's game as well. On the other end of things for Dyke New Hartford, Peyton Peterson, the junior, is averaging a double-double of 16 points and 10 rebounds per game. One of the best players in the state in Class 2A. And she'll be joined by a better three-point shooting lineup than last season. Marin Bixby, Ellery Knock. They can both knock it down from outside. No pun intended. So some star power certainly on the court for tonight's game. Some future college players on both sides of the equation. And exactly what you'd want here at the end of the regular season. Yes, and definitely a different feel than the normal uh, top of Iowa conference games. Just because of the size of the school. The, the people in the gym. Very big stands. It's got a full house. Garrigan, I'm going to put the official Garrigan crowd at 74 over there on our side. I'll work on that official count later, make sure I count out heads over there. But a uh, good crowd made the two-hour trip over here to Dyke. And with all this uh, atmosphere, it's going to be interesting to see how the teams adjust right at the beginning of the game. It's not going to be the typical advantage right off the bat for the Bears. You know, Audie Crooks, of course, has the height, but the height is not going to be that much of advantage tonight because Dyke New Hartford also has height. And uh, we've got the quickness of Molly Joyce and the slew of Garrigan guards, but they've got quickness and length. So the, the things uh, that Garrigan always just knows they're going to have an advantage on are not necessarily going to be there. And watching Dyke New Hartford warm up, they have a lot of players with a great wingspan, some great height. Three players six feet or taller in the starting lineup. So, of course, for Garrigan, you have the six foot three Audie Crooks. But besides that, really, the rest of your starting lineup is filled out by players who are around five foot seven in height. So, there will be a size disadvantage besides Crooks in that lineup for Garrigan. And that'll make it tough. It'll be larger guards that Garrigan's not used to facing, passing lanes with more arms in them. And you have to fit into a tighter window tonight against Dyke New Hartford. So, this is a unique challenge for the Golden Bears in that aspect. Yeah, I agree. Agree. And we'll see how they approach. You heard the pregame interview with Coach Dahl of Dyke New Hartford. He's anticipating trying to keep Crooks away from the basket, make her extend her game outwards, make her shoot some more mid-range jump shots, which we've seen Audie working on this year. But as a Bear fan, you want to see Audie do what she does, get that ball into the basket, rebound that basketball, and play her power game inside. And of course, we want to see Molly Joyce bring on the full repertoire of moves that she has, get to the hoop, and start draining threes. Of course, the shot is going to look a little different. Our girls, of course, are experienced with different looking gyms, but they're going to have bleachers behind the hoop tonight. Uh, say what you will about atmosphere, but it's different when you're shooting a ball with students right behind the hoop on one side and another crowd on the other side of the hoop. But a different feel. There's a lot more space. There's not a wall right behind the backboard. It just looks different, feels different, and sometimes you end up shooting different. So we hope that adjustment comes quickly.
Yes, this is no North Union High School gymnasium where the walls are right on top of you and the students are right on top of you. A spacious gymnasium here at Dyke New Hartford High School. Well, basketball action is coming up. They are getting set for the starting line of introductions and the national anthem as we'll take a timeout here on the Algona Radio YouTube stream as the video streaming is sponsored by Algona State Farm Insurance agent Billy Offerman, Algona Municipal Utilities, High Endeavors, and Chemna Auto Center. Timeout right now on KLGA and basketball action is coming up next after this. High School Sports on Hometown and Home Country Radio. Brought to you by these sports club members. Farmer State Bank is proud to be a part of our community for over 125 years with offices in Algona, Whittemore, and West Bend. Phil's Auto and Truck Repair. Service is the difference. Trend Salon, your complete family hair salon. It's all about you. Oak Crest Funeral Services, celebrating a life lived. Lusher Family Dentistry, serving your family since 1965 on Call Street in Algona. Algona Frame and Auto Body, collision specialist, a total commitment to excellence. Water Connection, from softeners to bottled water and service, call 295-SOFT. Algona Pizza Ranch, there's so much to love. Stroman Dental, giving you something to smile about. All bringing you this game on the radio. At Security State Bank, we realize each customer has a unique set of needs and goals. That's why we place a greater value on providing outstanding customer service. All products and services are designed for customers within our local community. We value each customer that walks through our door and wants to give them the personalized attention they deserve. Find out why Security State Bank in Algona, Burt, and Laverne is your partner in community banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Security State Bank. With over a decade of experience, Jake Ingalls Electric is here to handle any electrical job you could possibly have. From anything agricultural related to complex commercial wiring to something simple like installing a new outlet in your home, Jake Ingalls Electric does it all. Have your wiring done right and call Jake at 515 320 4286. Jake Ingalls Electric, shockingly good service. For over 40 years, Northwest Iowa Bone Joint and Sports Surgeons have maintained one mission to provide excellence in orthopedic care. Their team of nine physicians offer specialized care in everything from arthroscopic same-day surgery to joint replacement as well as hand and foot surgery and have an orthopedic surgeon on call 24-7. Healthcare isn't about appointments, it's about taking care of people, and that's their specialty. Visit Northwest Iowa Bone Joint and Sports Surgeons on the web at nwiabone.com. When you need cash on the go, there's no need to pay a surcharge fee with MoneyPass. Iowa State Bank is proud to be part of the MoneyPass network of surcharge-free ATMs found nationwide. Look for the green and blue MoneyPass symbol on over 32,000 ATMs across the nation. Or find an ATM near your vacation spot or travel destination at MoneyPass.com. MoneyPass, another way that Iowa State Bank helps people succeed. Member FDIC. It's time to meet the starting lineup for the Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears. Zoe Montag, sophomore, number 22. Garrigan at the steal. Here comes the transition. The sidestep by Montag in the lay-in. Zoe Montag is going crazy right now, and Garrigan's up 81-38. Ashlyn Hovey, senior, number 30. Passes left back to Hovey. She'll rip the three-pointer, and she hits it again. Oh. Nobody can cool off Ashlyn Hovey right now. Abby Capacious, junior, number 21. Finds Capacious inside, underneath the bucket, high off the glass, she put it down and she got fouled. <laughs> Molly Joyce, senior, number 11. Joyce towards the right, Joyce crosses over, step back three on the way, and she sticks it! Nothing but net at the buzzer for Molly Joyce. Audie Crooks, senior, number 55. Flips it into Crooks, Crooks tips it three times, catches, lays it off the window and scores. Audie Crooks with her fourth straight 40-point game. Tip off of your game is coming up next on Hometown and Home Country Radio. The Bishop Garrigan starting lineup under the direction of head coach Brandon Schwab for Dyke New Hartford and head coach Bruce Dahl. They will have the junior number three, Jaden Peterson, the senior number 11, Camille Landfair, senior number 13, Ellery Nock, junior number 15, Marin Bixby, and junior number 25, Peyton Peterson. 
as the players head out onto the floor right now. Garrigan wearing their road gold uniforms with the black lettering and numbering on the front and back. Dyke New Hartford in the home whites. They have the blue lettering and numbering and the blue trims down the side of the uniform. At midcourt, it'll be Ellery Knox, six foot one for Dyke New Hartford, going up against the six foot three Audi Crooks, right at that Wolverine logo at midcourt. It is time for basketball action, one of the most anticipated games of the season, and Crooks taps it. She got tied up that time with Knock, and they are going to jump it up again as they locked up that time at midcourt. Yeah, neither of the jumpers are able to come down with the ball. Someone else needed to grab it. Both players hit it. Crooks snagged it. And we'll try again. Crooks taps it sideways to Hovey. She hands it off to Joyce, and we are underway from Dyke New Hartford High School. Bishop Garrigan heads left to right on the radio dial. Golden Bears ranked number one in the state in offense at 77.9 points per game as they start with a post-touch by Audie Crooks and a quick two. Back the other way come the Wolverines. Driving in Peterson. She's all by herself and she puts it in. 2-2 tie. Dyke New Hartford. They're scoring just under 69 points per game. Number four in the state overall and number one in class two A's. Joyce sees some pressure and gets it up to Capacious. Cross court Montag in the corner. Rotation to Joyce of 726 on the clock. A Dyke New Hartford student section getting juiced up in the background as the Golden Bears move the ball around the perimeter. Joyce slicing in. Got to the cup and dropped it in for two. Oh, the Garrigan Senior Stars make their presence known right off the bat. Crooks with the first bucket, Joyce with the second. These two teams are littered across the top of the state leaderboard in multiple categories. Molly Joyce with her first two is Peterson's top of the key. Peterson takes two dribbles in, bounces down low to Jane Peterson, off the window and she missed it, and Crooks snatches the contested rebound. You can see the matchup there. Capacious gives us several inches to Peterson. Crooks lobs it up to Capacious. That was a long pass on this extended court. And Capacious comes down into the corner to our right to Hovey. Crooks in the high post. Driving right. Takes it at a wide angle. Offensive foul on e. Crooks. It was drawn by Peyton Peterson. Yeah, Peyton Peterson was sliding step for step with her. Audie puts the ball on the floor. Takes two dribbles towards the basket. Peterson goes flying and gets the call. Both players are moving, but the referee decided Peterson had good defensive position. Bishop Garrigan for Dyke New Hartford 2 starting off the game as the senior Ellery Knock brings it into the front court. Knock will be playing her college basketball. William Jewell, she gets the ball back, and her shot is bothered. It's short. It's tipped into the lane. Re Peterson had it for a moment. It's loose again. Crooks trying to reach in, and Peterson got it back out top. Ellery Knock make that Marin Bixby for the ball. Now it's Knock, far side of the course, guarded by Joyce along the perimeter. Joyce had the poke away briefly, but it's picked back up by Knock. And Knock double dribbled. That was a clear double dribble. She stopped, picked it up, and then started again. I think Knock thought someone had tapped the ball and she was allowed to dribble again. Didn't mean to do that. Boy, you can see the intensity of this game much different. Uh, the pressure right now against Molly Joyce, different than what she's used to. Joyce, a bullet up the court to Hovey. Cross-court feed to Montag. In the corner, lets it fly, and she was fouled on the three-point attempt. Zoe Montag is going to be shooting three free throws as the foul was committed by Jaden Peterson. So if you're going to run a full-court press against the Bears and they make the long pass like they did there to Montag in the corner, you're going to have to get back on defense. And they did that. They came flying in but couldn't put the brakes on fast enough and caught Montag's hand. Montag rattles in the first foul shot. She is rarely at the foul line as someone who primarily shoots three-pointers. Came into tonight two of six from the charity stripe, and she's good on the first one. Sophomore swishing the second one. That was good preparation by the Bears, knowing that press was coming. Montag got to that corner knowing that would be an open spot and very difficult for the defense to get back to. Bishop Garrigan has Crooks dropped all the way back. Montag leaves the third one short. That's two out of three, and Ellery Nock has the rebound. Knox averaging about five rebounds per game. A 6-1 point guard. She started her career as a post player, but improved her ball handling skills, and now she's the point guard. As Jaden Peterson has it, Capacious shadows her along the perimeter, far side of the court. Right wing, Peyton Peterson, passing left to Bixby. Down low, it's Knock. Knock in traffic. Puts up a tough shot, and she missed it off the glass. Ball is tapped out of bounds. Last touch by Garrigan. Crafty plays by Coach Dahl. Uh, knock the point guard is at least four inches, maybe five, over Molly Joyce. Molly Joyce is going to guard her with that quickness, but they immediately try to post Molly up down low. Knock is 6-1, Joyce is 5-7. That's a big size advantage as Peterson comes onto the right wing to Jaden Peterson. Off the pass from Peyton Peterson. Jaden Peterson for the jumpers, it misses, and Hobie grabs the loose ball. Joyce up the far side of the quarter, behind the back dribble, flips it into Crooks, but it's intercepted. Peyton Peterson undercut it, and here she comes, sprinting the floor, and it's poked away from behind. Molly Joyce on the recovery, saved an easy two. Great hustle by Joyce. You love it when a player kind of makes a mistake. Joyce throws that pass to Crooks a million times this year, but not against a 6'3 opponent. Gets picked off, but Joyce hustles back and steals the ball back. 
Peyton Peterson has some good initial quickness as it's an elbow jumper on the way and banked in. Ellery Knock hits it and it's 6-4. Now here comes some pressure against Molly Joyce. She's got two players in her face, gives it up to Capacious. It looks like much more of an effort to get out the court in this big court assist is intercepted by Peterson off the air and Capacious pass into the corner. Bixby lets it fly. Three-pointer is short. Off of the board, Peterson. Her follow is up and it is good, tying the game at six. Good positioning defensively by the Dyke New Harford Wolverines. Joyce sparks into the front court, blew a tire, but the ball went right to Hovey. In the lane, Crooks, near corner Montag, fumbles with it, finds Capacious on the baseline, wraps it around to Hovey, rotation to Joyce, and a good closeout as she's covered on the perimeter by Bixby. Good press break by Garrigan, now to set up that half court offense. 4.34 on the clock, quarter number one, Capacious heads left around the perimeter and comes out top to Joyce. Dyke New Hartford giving up just 27 and a half points per game as Joyce misses a three-pointer, but it's rebounded by Capacious. Flips it into Crooks, it's out of her reach, and it's picked up by Camille Landfair on the turnover. 6-6 six, six tie, Knock bringing it across half court. Averaging about 12 points per game. Landfair over to the right, Peterson. Peterson will step into a three-pointer, wide open, and she missed it. That one hits off the shot clock, and out of bounds, Bishop Garrigan dared Peterson to take it. Now, Emmy Bartolo, Seisha Alish come into the game. Montag and Hovey are gonna get a breather. The press is set up. Bartolo and Alish, both good ball handlers, but they are certainly giving up a lot of height to these tall Wolverine players. And number 23, Maddie Busco will come into the game for Dyke New Hartford replacing Bixby. Down to the baseline, Crooks in traffic. Ball got stripped, it's right back to her though, and she lays it in. Garrigan back up by two. Great concentration by Crooks. The ball was stripped, and she was able to regather it. Crowd wanted to travel, but it stripped completely out of her hands. Audie Crooks with four points, had a streak earlier this year of five straight games of 40 plus points. That was broken last night with 17 against North Iowa as a foul on the entry pass into the lane. That'll go against Garrigan with 3.36 on the clock, and that'll be Molly Joyce. Uh, the very ticky-tack foul, Capacious and Joyce both were making a play on the ball. That was kind of an errant pass. They threw it right into no man's land. It was an easy play for Garrigan, but we're kind of bailed out by a foul there. Into the corner it goes, three-point ball is missed, it's short by Busco, rebound by Peterson, and her fall is blocked by Crooks. Outlet up to Joyce, behind the defense, striding to the bucket and putting it in, 10-6 Garrigan. What a huge block by Crooks and the created offense, Molly Joyce streaking the big floor. Audie Crooks had 26 points, 25 rebounds, and eight blocks last year against Dyke New Hartford, and she picks up an early block tonight. Peterson casually working into the lane, underhands it, Capacious trying to rip it away from Jaden Peterson, and a jump ball is forced, possession arrow towards the Wolverines. Yeah, I think Landfair on the outside got away with the travel. I'm sorry, yeah, it was Landfair, I believe, no, not traveled and go right in front of Coach Schwab, and he called it for the official, but uh, the official did not call it. Jump ball created by Capacious is tough play. Bixby lobs it into knock. Now with it is Busco, comes back to Bixby into the lane, Peterson finds the cutting Peterson, that is Peterson to Peterson, and Jaden finishes it off for two. That was a nice play, very similar to the backdoor play that Garrigan runs to Capacious. Capacious is gonna have a tough battle all night with much taller player. Molly Joyce takes it herself, weaves past the press, here she comes, ball poked away briefly, she collects it in the corner. Allish on the perimeter to Crook's edge of the lane, back out to Joyce, three point try, and she cans it! 13-8 Bishop Garrigan. Well, Molly Joyce is at her best that possession. Full court pass down to the baseline, collected by Bixby as she drifts into the corner. Peterson on the block against Crooks. She shovels it to Bixby, it's off her hands, it's loose, and it's shoveled out to Jaden Peterson. Peterson to the top of the key to knock. Joyce guarding on the perimeter with 18 on the shot clock, 219 on the game clock. They'll screen Joyce, Bixby heads right. Make that knock, excuse me, as she'll hand it off now to Peterson working the baseline. The pass is threaded into Peterson, hooks it over Crooks and missed it. Peyton Peterson could not finish a very tough shot. Oh, big stop by the Bears there. Good defense by Joyce and Crooks, especially all the way to the end. Golden Bears, the top defense in the top of Iowa West, giving up about 38 points per game. Those two games early in the season in the Twin Cities, maybe throw the average off a bit, but this is a good defensive team as the ball is spiked out of bounds. Knock, knocked it away, and Garrigan will keep it. Knock's gonna get a break here, much needed break. She's been working really hard. She just swatted the 6-1 the player, just swatted the ball from Seisha Alice. Seisha has probably not played against many people that tall. Capacious tried to fit it in a window to Crooks. It's knocked back to Capacious. Capacious attacking inside, missing off the glass. Ball is tipped towards the baseline. It touches out of bounds, and it will stay with Garrigan. Jaden Peterson let that go when she could have grabbed it. She thought that was off of Bishop Garrigan. Yeah, uh, they're gonna set up in a 2-3 here and leave Joyce open. Joyce, right wing triple, and she finds the bottom of the net. 
Molly Joyce has hit two three-pointers, and Bruce Dahl takes a timeout for Dyke New Hartford. 16-8 Bishop Garrigan as the Golden Bears have come out with hot shooting, and Molly Joyce is really keeping the energy going. Wow, Molly Joyce has been at her best this first quarter. They came out against a press. And she's broken the press, that one possession, she broke the press all on her own, who came down, made him pay for it with a layup. She is really playing a fantastic first quarter here for the Bears and much needed. Boy, Molly Joyce has really had end of the season uh, where she really supported Crooks getting to the ball, but man, tonight, Molly Joyce, when you need her, comes on playing a great first quarter. Molly Joyce had 22 points against North Iowa last night in that 72 to 38 Bishop Garrigan victory as Joyce hit the 1800 points in her career milestone and now she has 10 early in this ball game Bishop Garrigan 16 Dyke New Hartford 8 as we are at 137 to go in the first quarter with the basketball to Landfair as Emmy Bartolo the freshman guards her on the perimeter Landfair bouncing it over to the right finds Buskel she gets it into the high post. Jaden Peterson now down low. Peyton Peterson. Crooks quickly gets back there on defense to cut Peterson off. And now on the perimeter, it is Bixby. Firing it into the lane. Knocked away. And a turnover forced by the Golden Bears. Here's Joyce on the push. Joyce sidestepping. Joyce goes right to the bucket. And she draws the foul. Molly Joyce continues to initiate. And she'll shoot two. While Coach Dahl called the timeout, I think, exclusively to, exclusively to say, how did we leave Molly Joyce open for that three-point shot on out-of-bounds play? And she came out of that timeout, and the timeout didn't slow her down at all. She gets the ball off to the races, now at the free throw line. Only Joyce sets up for the first one, and she drains it. 17-8, Bishop Garrigan. Both these teams kind of deal with the same thing in the regular season, where you have a lot of blowout wins and really have to try to find a way to stay engaged. 17 of Bishop Garrigan's 19 wins have been 30-plus points. Also 17 of 19, Dyke New Hartford wins have been by 30-plus points, as the missed free throw is rebounded by Peterson. And now here will... Knock comes into the front court, down into the corner of the land fair near side. Top of the key, it goes to Peterson. Peyton Peterson goes into Crooks, gets turned back outside, finding Knock on the perimeter. Knock underhands it to land fair, heads to the foul line of 54 seconds in the quarter. Peterson just inside the three point perimeter, missed it. Short, and Crooks has the rebound as Peterson tried to swan it away. And now Bishop Garrigan can slow it up a little bit. Joyce will walk it across half court with 41 seconds on the clock in the quarter. They'll come up to defender near half court. Joyce flipping it right to Capacious. The junior comes back to Joyce. Joyce heads left. She sidearms it down to the baseline. A nice cut by Capacious. She got lost under the bucket, found herself, and laid it in for two. Well, she got her footwork underneath her, and she went up between two taller players, jumped right out of a phone booth, up to the basket. Nice play, Capacious. Abby Capacious, the second team top of Iowa West selection from last season, is so great at those cuts. And now Joyce jumps the pass and she steals it along the baseline. Ten seconds to go. Joyce running. Joyce a full head of steam. And there's a foul to stop the fast break with 7.7 .7 seconds on the clock. Now Garrigan's got to call an out-of-bounds play. They're taking it out underneath their own hoop. This is a huge seven seconds here. If they can convert this out-of-bounds play for a bucket, that lead's extended right before the quarter. These moments are big. 7.7 .7 seconds, Olish lobbing it into Capacious just inside of the perimeter. Six seconds, near side Bartolo, lets it rip for three, and that's an air ball. It came up short. One second to go in the quarter. At half court, Busco will not get the shot off, and that will bring an end to quarter number one. But Bishop Garrigan comes out, guns a-blazing, and they throw the first punch on the road, taking a 19-8 lead over Dyke New Hartford here on Hometown Radio, KLGA, and the Algona Radio YouTube live stream. High School Sports on Hometown and Home Country Radio. Brought to you by these sports club members. Farmer State Bank is proud to be a part of our community for over 125 years with offices in Algona, Whittemore, and West Bend. Phil's Auto and Truck Repair. Service is the difference. Trend Salon, your complete family hair salon. It's all about you. Oak Crest Funeral Services, celebrating a life lived. Lusher Family Dentistry, serving your family since 1965 on Call Street in Algona. Algona Frame and Auto Body, collision specialist, a total commitment to excellence. Water Connection, from softeners to bottled water and service, call 295-SOFT. Algona Pizza Ranch, there's so much to love. Stroman Dental, giving you something to smile about. All bringing you this game on the radio. Tyler Lance, my partner's Beanie Bodie as we begin the second quarter. Beanie, Bishop Garrigan has had a hard time getting the ball into tight windows to Audie Crooks. The solution, more Molly Joyce. Oh, absolutely. Molly Joyce really playing. Here she comes, bringing the ball up, start this second quarter. Let's see what she has in store now. 19 to 8, Bishop Garrigan on top of Dyke New Hartford. Dyke New Hartford has not lost at home since 2019, 1,158 days ago, as they've been dominant inside of their home gymnasium. 
They have not seen many first quarter deficits as the Golden Bears have it. Joyce down to our right in the corner now. Hobie on the wing. Capacious in the lane. Flips it up. Missed it off to the left. And Peyton Peterson has another rebound. Capacious was so excited about how open she was. She was too open. She turned and shot. Just thrilled that she was open. But they're doing a nice job of doubling Crooks down low with that height. Bixby over to the right to Jaden Peterson, driving against Capacious, turns into the lane, puts it off the window, and she dropped it in. An athletic move by Peterson. Athletic was right. Crooks had her in behind, did a nice job of not picking up a cheap foul there because that was a well-earned basket. 19-10. Now in the lane, Crooks got behind the defense and waited in for two off the assist by Zoe Montag. Yeah, Montag and, and Hovey checked in at the quarter break, so Bears have all the starters on the floor. 21 to 10, Bishop Garrigan on top of Dyke New Hartford as Peterson heads to the right. Edge of the lane, Capacious staying in front, now outside the Bixby. Bixby into the far corner to Knock. Knock, one of the two seniors in the starting lineup, goes back outside to Peterson, working the baseline, trying to reverse, bumped by Capacious, and the ball swirls out of the drain. Very nearly an unbelievable and one, but Peterson will head to the charity stripe for two instead. And right in front of the student section, no less, they would have gotten a little wild there. Now, Peterson, if you want to predict the future of this game, Peterson is going to be the biggest problem for the Bears. She is a strong player. She can drive baseline. She's usually picked up in that 2-3 on the bottom by Capacious, and as she showed just there, uh, she's got a little bit of height on Capacious and all the physicality that Capacious has, which is a lot. So it's going to be a big battle between those two young women. A missed free throw by Jaden Peterson. The Wolverines have struggled at the foul line, and she'll split the pair. Dyke New Hartford finished last in the North Iowa City Central Conference in terms of field goal percentage. As Capacious is in a sandwich, and she's fouled on the arm. The home crowd does not like it, but Bishop Garrigan will maybe get bailed out of a tough situation there on the foul. Yeah, the backside ref called it from a long ways away. Crowds always hate that. There was an official right there. She was going to let it go. It probably could have been a jump ball. It was kind of a tie-up, but... Bar Garrigan bailed out with that foul, and Coach Schwab wants a timeout as this press looks a little different all of a sudden. Garrigan having a little trouble against the press as a 30-second timeout is called by Coach Schwab. 21-11, to Bishop Garrigan over Dyke New Hartford. And when you look at these two teams, most everything is great. It's always small areas that you have to nitpick at when you're trying to win a state championship. For Dyke New Hartford, like Coach Dahl referenced in the pregame, it's finding a little more depth on the bench, as that's been a struggle sometimes this season. It's finding better three-throw shooting, as they're only about 53.5% from the charity stripe. You know, for Garrigan, they have a few small areas to work on as well heading into the tournament. Right. Neither team needs to go to their bench right now, but it's going to be interesting to see down the stretch on this big gym if players start to get tired, which team can go deeper on that bench. But yeah, fine-tuning things. Tyler, we talked about ways if we had to coach against Bishop Garrigan what we would do and one of them is pressure like they're doing right now if at least just to wear him out. Molly Joyce sprinting into the front court tight roping the sideline lobbing to Montag. Montag into Crooks and the knock away. Ellery Knock denied the basketball from Crooks. Outlet up to Peterson behind the defense and she was fouled. She'll shoot two free throws that was very nearly an and one but Peyton Peterson will head to the line for two off the Montag foul. Well, I got to remind our listeners at home this is a state championship volleyball team so boy they no doubt have learned how to play under pressure before and battle back from deficits and they've got height and strength and especially in the form of Peterson at the line right now. She drains the foul shot. This was the state title team in 2021 in volleyball and then they had a heartbreaking five set loss in the state championship round this season but this is always a great volleyball program and it's that length coming into account as Capacious rebounds the mystery throw and gets it out to Joyce. Joyce has Hobie wide open under the basket. She lost the ball. She puts it back into play but it goes right to Marin Bixby, and the Golden Bears cannot capitalize on an opportunity. 21-12, Bishop Garrigan leads Dyke New Hartford about two minutes in to quarter number two. The pass left goes behind Landfair. She picks it back up. Golden Bears have played a lot of man-to-man -man as Peterson backing against Crooks. Fades for a jumper. It rattles off, and Crooks grabs the rebound. Looking for the outlet, Joyce will curl around to get the basketball, and now she'll sprint to the front court. Here comes Joyce again. Joyce in the lane. Foul line jumper. It rattles three times and pops off. Offensive board capacious. Her shot is blocked. A stuff by Ellery Knock. And then the pass is knocked away. It's loose, and it is picked up. Tracking it down as Bixby near half court. Over to Jaden Peterson, looking to drive. Draws Crooks, her pass wraps around, and it's taken by Hovey, intercepting the intended target of Landfair. There has been a lot of 50-50 balls in the last two minutes, and uh, Garrigan got that one. Joyce to the near side to Montag, now into Crooks. One-handed catch, off the glass, and she scored it. Oh, Montag gets a high five for that one when Audie gets a chance. That was a great pass to Crooks. When you look at Bishop Garrigan, it almost looks like they're really 
struggling at times to pass in this large court, but the passes are just barely sneaking through. But even Dyke New Hartford, they've had a few passes jumped by this active Bishop Garrigan guard court as Peterson gets inside against Crooks. Crooks stays vertical, but Peterson puts it in over the top. That'll make it 23-14. Crooks did not come at her too aggressively. Going to concede that rather than pick up fouls. She's got to stay in this game. Hovey into Crooks in a one-on-one. -on -one. Spins back for a jumper, and she swishes it. Oh, that was pretty. Post players trading baskets. 25-14. Dyke New Hartford is trying to draw Crooks out from under the basket, but Crooks is not taking the bait early in this game on defense. 4.34 on the clock. The senior Landfair has it up top. Landfair passes left of the lane to Peterson. Turns to face Crooks. Lobs it inside. One-handed catch Jaden Peterson. And a sandwich. Her pass knocked away. And Montag has it. The double team works to perfection. Yeah, Capacious had the primary defense and Joyce a great help. Now Joyce inside to Crooks. Crooks spinning, fading back for another jumper. That one is way short as Peterson vacuums in another rebound. I got to give the Wolverines credit for getting back in defense. They put a little pressure on you, but they sure can hustle back and set up their D. Halfway through quarter number two, 25-14. Bishop Garrigan on top of Dyke New Hartford. Down to Peyton Peterson at the baseline, backing up towards the short corner as Crooks will lay off her. In the corner, Jane Peterson holds it over her head, and Coach Dahl would like a timeout. It will be a 60-second timeout, so we will take that timeout as well, right here on Hometown Radio, KLGA Algona. More sports club members making these broadcasts possible on Hometown Home Country Radio. Algona Livestock Sales, sales every Monday. Countryside Barbecue Sauce, two sauces for all seasons. Farm and Home Services, view their listings at farmhomeservices.com. Holmes Animal Clinic, animals large and small, they love them all. Sign Works, for all your signage needs as well as printed shirts, caps, and jackets. Stop in or call 295-9544. Style Salon, your salon in Algona. Create yourself. Dance Connection and Tumbling by Michelle. Passionate about teaching, creative about dance. Visit their studio or danceconnectionbymichelle.com. Tafe Wellness Center in Algona and Armstrong. Keeping athletes in the game with chiropractic care. Take charge of your health. All proud sponsors of this broadcast. Bishop Garrigan 25, Dyke New Hartford 14 as we come back on the Algona Radio YouTube stream. Brought to you by Algona State Farm Insurance Agent Billy Offerman, Algona Municipal Utilities, High Endeavors, and Chemna Auto Center. Beanie, interesting start to this ball game. A lot has already happened here, and we're just in the first half. Yeah, this is a fun game. This is shaping up to be the perfect thing for these coaches to work on their game before the state tournament. But right now, it just feels like someone is going to come out the victor, and nobody knows who it's going to be, even though Garrigan has a nice lead right now. The Wolverines have tried to take the basketball inside tonight as Peterson heads right of Joyce, bangs it off the glass. She got fouled and she put it in. A chance for a three-point play by Jaden Peterson. Yeah, you can see Jaden Peterson's going to be a problem for the Bears. Imagine Abby Capacious, but four inches taller. Uh, she is not afraid to challenge Capacious, and if you've been watching Capacious in the top of Iowa Conference, when Capacious gets a rebound, no one messes with her, but Peterson is. Peterson bounces the three throw in. That will make it 25-17 as Dyke New Hartford trims their deficit to eight points. The Wolverines have greatly improved on three-point shooting. They were under 27% last year. This year, they're over 32%, but they have not hit a three ball yet. They have been looking to take it inside. The pass is denied from Crooks. It's tipped right to Capacious. Johnny on the spot puts it in for two. Oh, nice play. And here comes Knock is pushing the tempo. Up into the corner, land fair. To the cutting Peterson in the lane, working against Crooks. Peterson tried to pass to Peterson, and Capacious knocked it out of bounds. You know, they have all the faith in Audie Crooks guarding that play one-on-one -on -one against the post. As this game goes on, I can see Joyce and crew right now. It's Emmy Bartolo and Zoe Montag helping down on that and getting a steal out of that situation. A lob into Jaden Peterson comes around the perimeter to Camille Landfair. Landfair back to knock. She'll rise for a free and it rattles off. The long arms rebound by Peyton Peterson as she reached out for it. Her follow misses and Crooks vacuums in the rebound. Now it's Joyce. Joyce bumping and getting her way into the front court. Joyce has expended a lot of energy in this first half. That will be something to watch as the game goes on. They've been using Joyce to break the press off the dribble as Montag's pass is tipped away and stolen by the Wolverines. Here comes Bixby up the court. Bixby stops on the wing, finds the cutting Peterson, rolling to the bucket, and there's an easy two. That was all created by the steal defensively, and that steal was created by the wingspans. You know, players get recruited in upper levels for their wingspans, and Dyke New Hartford has a lot of it. Changing the there, but the wrestling tournament was last week. But Capacious was not going to give up that ball. Alternate procession goes to the Wolverines. And here comes Knock, who is playing a great second quarter, answering Joyce's wonderful first quarter. 
I keep saying the Wolverines have done a nice job on Audie Crooks defensively. She has 10 points, but a lot of those are fadeaway jumpers. There haven't been as me many easy looks in the bucket. Really just a couple of those tonight. Peterson looking to drive in, but she got started early, and that's a travel. Yeah, she's got some happy feet there. I think she got away with one or two earlier in this game, but that one is a glaring one and gets called for here. Yeah, Tyler, you're right. Uh, you know, we've been so used to Crooks scoring 20 by the end of the first quarter. Uh, 10 points in, 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 the, in the half is pretty good for, she's getting double teamed by six footers. All tried to throw it into Crooks. Crooks wasn't looking for it. It got tipped right to her anyways, and she laid it in. A disaster turns into a bucket for the Golden Bears. Well, someone said some prayers real quick for that one, because the Bears had no business getting that ball after the errant pass, and it ends up as a bucket. Well, now Dyke New Hartford will try to answer if Ellery knock as she passes left to Landfair. 145 on the clock. Down low to Jaden Peterson. Into the corner goes Peyton Peterson. Driving in. Sidesteps Crooks. Puts a flush off the glass for two. 29 21. Garrigan's lead back down to eight points as they have led the majority of the first half. One and a half minutes left in the first half as Joyce flips it right to Capacious. Capacious lobs into Crooks. It's swatted away from behind. Jaden Peterson is the elevation to knock it out of bounds. Coach Swab's upset. He says, well, Peterson, she may have knocked the ball, but she also hammered Audie Crooks from behind and caught her on the arm and doesn't like the no call there as Alish takes it out of bounds. Audie Crooks tonight, she's wearing those special shoes she wore in the state championship game. That's how you know it's a big game tonight. As Crooks is definitely a shoe connoisseur with over 40 pairs. Joyce passes right to Alish on the wing with 114 on the clock. Alish into Crooks. It's knocked away from behind, but this time a foul. Peterson swung down and got Crooks in the back of the head, and that one was a little more clear. Exact same thing. And if you're watching on the YouTube live stream, you saw that they're triple teaming Audie Crooks. And Garrigan doesn't care. They're still going to throw it into their moneymaker. 111 on the clock from the baseline. It's Alish bouncing into Capacious. Capacious rises for a tough one. Missed the shot. Crooks fingertip rebound. She follows, and Audie Crooks draws the foul as she will shoot two free throws. Yeah, Capacious, good job there fighting. She's laughing with Crooks there. Those two have shared lots of moments over the course of the season, doing all the work down low for the Bears. Capacious and Crooks, good friends on and off the court. Audie Crooks. And Abby Capacious are two of the top five offensive rebounders in the top of Iowa Conference as it's drained on the foul shots. Crooks makes it a nine-point game. Now, we've got Hovey and Montag getting a good breather on the bench. Bartolo and Alish giving them a break. That's going to be big down the stretch for the Bears, keeping those guards fresh on this big court. Crooks splits the pair, and Peyton Peterson grabbed the rebound. Now it's Knock. Knock gets turned around. Joyce staying in front with 59 seconds on the clock. Peterson bumping into Crooks. Turning 360, and Crooks peeled the ball away. Got it up to Bartolo with 52 seconds to go in the half, and now Capacious far side of the court. It's picked out of her pocket by Landfair as Capacious lost track of where the senior was. Now here come the Wolverines with 41 seconds left on the clock. About a 14 second difference between game clock and shot clock as Knock looks for the screen. They'll double screen Joyce as Knock heads left and now flips it back to the right to Jaden Peterson. Right of the lane, working on Capacious. In the lane, jumper is up. It bounces three times on the rim and is no good as Crooks rebounds. Allen up to Bartolo, it's off her chest and it's taken by Landfair on the turnover. Jaden Peterson inside, Peyton Peterson. Peterson up and she missed it left. Rebound is tipped, it's peeled away and then a foul on Dyke New Hartford. Looked like Landfair Fair was the guilty party scrapping of Crooks in the lane. Crooks came down with it, squared out to do the outlet pass, and some scrappy defenders were all over her, hacking and going at the ball. You'd have to see that one in slow-mo to see which one got the piece of Audie's arms. No doubt there was something there. And actually, that's Jane Peterson, which is big, because that is Jane Peterson's third foul of the ball game and seventh on Dyke New Hartford. And in my opinion, Jaden Peterson is the X factor on this Dyke New Hartford team. Uh, she's a force down there, inside, outside, and a good ball handler. That's a big foul call there. No, I understand why the Wolverines are upset. Crooks on the one and one, got it. 31-21, Miranda Tyler, the 5'9 junior, replaces Peterson. Tyler, did you talk to Audie Crooks between the last two games? Because we said Audie's free throw arch looks a little flat, and that was a nice, nice arch shot on that last one, and another. She rattles on the second one. While she's picked it up here, it is 32-21 as Crooks is now tied for fifth on the all-time scoring list with those three throws as she ties Ann O'Neill from Cedar Rapids Kennedy for fifth all-time. Eight seconds to go. On the way, a jumper. And that'll be an offensive foul. Oh, that's I love that call because so often players have to hit the deck to get the charge call. And uh, Joyce had the forearm thrown at her, and she didn't fall down, but she went flying and gets the charge call. 
Now five seconds for Joyce. Four seconds, three seconds, trying to create space with one. Side steps, puts it off the window. They'll wave it oh. off. She traveled. A oh. travel by Molly Joyce will wipe out the bucket with 0.3 seconds left on the clock. A beautiful bucket erased. That was going to be a cherry on top of Molly Joyce's excellent first half. And uh, the travel wipes it off. A full court heave down to Peterson. Peterson heaves it up at the buzzer, and that will be way short as halftime has arrived. Bishop Garrigan 32, Dyke New Hartford 21, here on Hometown Radio KLGA and at the Algona Radio YouTube live stream. High school sports on Hometown and Home Country Radio, brought to you by these sports club members. Farmer State Bank is proud to be a part of our community for over 125 years with offices in Algona, Whittemore, and West Bend. Phil's Auto and Truck Repair, service is the difference. Trend Salon, your complete family hair salon. It's all about you. Oakcrest Funeral Services, celebrating a life lived. Lusher Family Dentistry, serving your family since 1965 on Call Street in Algona. Algona Frame and Auto Body, collision specialist, a total commitment to excellence. Water Connection, from softeners to bottled water and service, call 295-SOFT. Algona Pizza Ranch, there's so much to love. Stroman Dental, giving you something to smile about. All bringing you this game on the radio. At Security State Bank, we realize each customer has a unique set of needs and goals. That's why we place a greater value on providing outstanding customer service. All products and services are designed for customers within our local community. We value each customer that walks through our door and wants to give them the personalized attention they deserve. Find out why Security State Bank in Algona, Burt, and Laverne is your partner in community banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Security State Bank. For over 40 years, Northwest Iowa Bone, Joint, and Sports Surgeons have maintained one mission, to provide excellence in orthopedic care. Their team of nine physicians offer specialized care in everything from arthroscopic same-day surgery to joint replacement as well as hand and foot surgery and have an orthopedic surgeon on call 24-7. Healthcare isn't about appointments, it's about taking care of people, and that's their specialty. Visit Northwest Iowa Bone Joint and Sports Surgeons on the web at nwiabone.com. Time from Dyke New Hartford High School. I'm Tyler Lance alongside my partner Beanie Bodie as right now in this highly anticipated showdown between the two defending state champions. Bishop Garrigan is leading Dyke New Hartford 32 to 21. Scoring by quarter looked like this. Bishop Garrigan jumped out to a 19 to 8 advantage at the end of the first quarter and the teams had an even 13 13 score in the second quarter leading to this 32 to 21 tally we see at halftime. Individually Audie Crooks leads the way with 15 points. Molly Joyce with 11 for Bishop Garrigan. Peyton Peterson has scored 11 for Dyke New Hartford, while Jaden Peterson has added eight points. Beanie, a lot going on in that first half, but I think, like you said, these two teams, they're getting a sufficient test, and the Golden Bears need to continue to be able to handle this full-court press that the Wolverines have thrown at them. Yeah, not only do they have great quickness in this full-court press, but they have these wingspans that are making the pedestrian passes that Garrigan usually throws side to side, and Molly Joyce usually just breaks a press all on her own. But this press is creating some problems, and that's great for Garrigan to work against. They've done a decent job against it, but they did have about four throwaways where Dyke New Hartford got some turnovers in that fourth quarter that were just kind of given to them by the Bears' uh, lack of ability to break that press. So you have two options. You can give it to Molly Joyce and say, Molly, just do your thing, go to work, and break this press. She's going to give it up a couple times, and you have to you have to concede that, and it's going to tire her out. Or, you know, you get capacious down there and the other guards – uh, and, and break it as a team. Coach Schwab will be deciding that in the locker room right now how to approach this press the second half. But the Garrigan guards are staying fresh. He's been rotating Bartolo and Alish in for Hovey and Montag, keeping those guards fresh. That's going to be big down the stretch, uh, having some fresh legs in the fourth quarter because you know this one's far from over. No doubt about it as Bishop Garrigan and Dyke New Hartford are battling it out tonight. And that's a good point you bring up about Joyce and just her level of energy throughout the game. Again, this is a larger court. It's a little bit longer, and Joyce is really having to work hard to bring the ball into the front court almost every time when they throw that press on. But this is good for Bishop Garrigan to work with because I can think of maybe a, a 1A team or two that Garrigan <laughs> might see at Wells Fargo Arena that runs a full court press as well. But, you know, Joyce's fatigue throughout the game will be something to watch for. She has shown no signs of fatigue so far, so we'll keep an eye on that in the second half. And then Jaden Peterson for Dyke New Hartford. 
Hartford. She has been incredibly, incredibly uh, solid in this ball game. We've talked a lot about Peyton Peterson, but Jaden really does not deserve to go, you know, into the shadows of Peyton. They are really, you know, right. 1A and 1B on this team, and we saw why with just, you know, her wide array of moves down low against Capacious. Right, and uh, Capacious doing a really good job on her, but it's like playing a mirror image, except taller if you're Abby Capacious. She's very similar to Abby Capacious, really crashes the boards hard, big, strong player, not afraid to battle in the paint, and that's going to be an important matchup. But that Jaden Peterson does have three fouls because of a key moment at the end of the second half. She was driving hard to the basket. Molly Joyce came up to defend, and there was a collision. Peterson extended the arm a little bit. Joyce went flying but didn't hit the deck, and the referee kind of had to call something and uh, called, the, called the foul on Peterson. Now, if that goes the other way, we're looking at Molly Joyce with three fouls at halftime, and she is one guard that does not get a sub out of the game. <laughs> Molly Joyce is not going to get a breather tonight unless it's because of foul trouble, uh, I suspect. So on that call, that momentous call right there, if they, it goes the other way, but fortunately for Garrigan, Peterson picks up her third foul, and now Coach Dahl of Dyke New Hartford Wolverines has to think about how he's going to manage her minutes the rest of this contest. And I want you to put on your coaching hat. Pretend you're Coach Dahl and Dyke, uh, Dyke New Hartford. Peyton Peterson, she's been trying to draw Audie Crooks away from the basket, but Crooks is staying home underneath. You know, Peyton Peterson is hanging out beyond the three-point line, and Crooks is just saying, go ahead and shoot it. Go ahead and drive if you want. I'm waiting for you in the lane. So you're not able to draw Crooks out right now. So what are you doing instead? Because at this point, I think that was a big part of the game plan to try to get Crooks away from the bucket, but she has been hard to dislodge from the paint tonight on the defensive side of things. Yeah, that's a great point. I, I would say if you're Coach Dahl, you start – encouraging your guards to take that mid-range jump shot. Uh, Garrigan's doing a nice job of keep running them off the three-point line. So take that mid-range jump shot. Take a dribble hard off the wing and pull up for that jumper and, and crash the boards because they do have height. Crooks has gotten her share of rebounds, but she's had to work for him. Hasn't come easy for her. So that could be an approach of, of Coach Dahl. And we've talked about their improved three-point shooting. Haven't really seen a lot of three-points launched by them yet because they haven't necessarily had to. And he might just be encouraging them, hey, shoot more. We're behind. Let that ball fly. Let's get on a hot streak. And uh, Garrigan needs to be ready for that offensive attack. Yeah, there's not too much to gripe about defensively for Dyke New Hartford, but offensively it has not been their typical night so far. And obviously when you're facing Garrigan, there's a lot to account for that you're not facing on a normal night-to-night -night basis. And you could say kind of the same thing in reverse for Garrigan. Obviously they're not seeing the kind of athletes that Dyke New Hartford has oh, throughout the point. season. So, you know, offense is going to look a little bit different. I, I would say, you know, on a night like this, your defense is what it is. You kind of know what you're doing, especially Garrigan as they go man-to-man -man defense. But offensively you have to change you know, so many different looks about what you yes. would normally do in a game like this. Yeah, that's a good point, Tyler. I completely have my blinders on, and I forgot that this Dyke New Hartford team, of course, they've played the whole season rolling their opponents as well because they have height on everybody. They are a two-way school, but it's not exactly like they're playing against other six-footers every night. So these players suddenly have to go to Audie Crooks, and they're not used to it either. And so they're probably making adjustments right now. And they can get those shots. We saw a nice bank shot earlier by Peterson where she took that shot from about 10 feet away from the basket and kind of had a nice little running bank shot. Like, they might be in the locker room encouraging themselves, like, hey, we now we've seen Crooks twice. We saw her last year. We saw her this first half. Like, we can do this. So it's really a fun strategy. And as far as how this game's going to go down the stretch and, and your coach Dahl, I think you just play Peterson with three fouls because let's say she fouls out in midway through the fourth quarter or even earlier. Well, that's a great test for your team, which could happen down the stretch, you know, fight, battle through that adversity. Because honestly, I know both these teams have stellar seasons. They're both number one in their respective classes in some polls. And But really, if your goal is to win a state championship for, for the, both these teams, you're just you really don't have that much to lose here other than the pride of leaving this gym tonight and you'll wake up tomorrow morning and you still have your goal intact that's a great point and not only that Peterson has to learn how to play when she's in foul trouble and avoid fouls so we'll see how coach Dahl manages that for Dyke New Hartford in the second half we will take a timeout the back-to-back -back state champion Dyke New Hartford Wolverines are on the ropes early against the Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears but the defending 1A champions are not out of the woods yet they're up 32 to 21 at halftime as they'll try to sustain their lead as we head into the third quarter We'll take a timeout, head into a quick break from our sponsors, and we'll come back with the third quarter of action on Hometown Radio KLGA. 
When you need cash on the go, there's no need to pay a surcharge fee with MoneyPass. Iowa State Bank is proud to be part of the MoneyPass network of surcharge-free ATMs found nationwide. Look for the green and blue MoneyPass symbol on over 32,000 ATMs across the nation. Or find an ATM near your vacation spot or travel destination at MoneyPass.com. MoneyPass, another way that Iowa State Bank helps people succeed. Member FDIC. For over 40 years, Northwest Iowa Bone, Joint, and Sports Surgeons have maintained one mission to provide excellence in orthopedic care. Their team of nine physicians offer specialized care in everything from arthroscopic same-day surgery to joint replacement as well as hand and foot surgery and have an orthopedic surgeon on call 24-7. Healthcare isn't about appointments, it's about taking care of people and that's their specialty. Visit Northwest Iowa Bone, Joint, and Sports Surgeons on the web at nwiabone.com. Set to begin the third quarter here on Hometown Radio, KLGA, and at the Algona Radio YouTube stream as video streaming is sponsored by Algona State Farm Insurance agent Billy Offerman, Algona Municipal Utilities, Hying Endeavors, and Kemna Auto Center. Right now on your Greg Penning & Company Certified Public Accountants Scoreboard, it's Bishop Garrigan 32, Dyke New Hartford 21. Beanie, I'll tell you what, Dyke New Hartford, they are going to make a push at some point in this game, and Garrigan will have to be ready for it, especially here in the third quarter, coming out of the locker room. Yeah, this is their home gym. They're going to hit a couple big shots. The crowd's going to go crazy, and they're going to get some momentum behind them. Is Garrigan ready to deal with that momentum? And Tyler, I guess it's early in the evening at 7.15. If you thought this game started at 7.30 because it was JV Varsity Girls, well, welcome to the contest. We're already at halftime. Yes, the start of the third quarter is underway as Bishop Garrigan has the ball heading right to left on the radio dial. Dyke New Hartford, they have not lost since the last time they played Garrigan. That was at the end of the season last year as a quick turnover by the Golden Bears. Montag's pass slipped through the hands of Capacious out of bounds. So they double team Montag and she tried to throw through the double team and they just volleyball blocked it. And uh, she was able to get it right back and swung it wide to Capacious and just uh, butterfingers. These two teams, both defending state champions, both returning three of five starters from last season as there's a traveling violation by Peyton Peterson trying to hook her way around Crooks. Yeah, she just put her head down and decided she was going to go hard against Crooks. I suspect that was coach design, tried to pick up a foul on Crooks right off the start uh, by a hard drive, but Crooks doesn't give ground and Peterson travels. Capacious flips it over to the right to Molly Joyce of 7.24 on the clock. Joyce... Surveying the zone defense, flipping it back to the left to Capacious. Now into the corner to Hovey. Hovey looking inside for Crooks. Fits it in a tight window. Crooks catches. Crooks puts it in. 34-21. Oh, that was funny. Ashlyn Hovey was looking across court. She wanted to throw the cross court pass, but that wasn't open. So she's like, well, I just I'll throw it to Audie. He gets two points. And Audie Crooks is now in sole possession of fifth place on the all-time scoring list in Iowa girls high school basketball as Peterson's foul line jumper is an air ball. It goes right to her teammate, and it's rejected. Knock had that shot rejected. And now Crooks trying to pivot away from trouble. Getting it up to Capacious with 6.47 on the clock. In the corner to Hovey, passed up a three, rotates to Joyce. Joyce to the elbow, now back out to Hovey. Let's it fly for a triple. Left, left it a little short, and Capacious for another offensive rebound. Finds Joyce, flips it into Crooks. Crooks banging her way inside and rolling it in with the right amount of spin. Oh, great ball movement. Dyke New Harper thought Garrigan was done passing, but Joyce had one more pass left, and that's to Crooks for another bucket. 19 points by Audie Crooks. Now it's Jaden Peterson against Capacious. Hits it off the window again, and she got it. 10 points by Jaden Peterson. Oh, she's good. Sign her up. Peterson is shooting just under 65% on field goals. Number one in the conference for Dyke New Hartford, and you can see why. She always hits it flush off the glass. A collision near midcourt. Now a pass is jumped. Here comes Jaden Peterson attacking into Capacious. She bowls her over, and a blocking foul is Capacious. Did not have the feet set. Well, Capacious is going to pick up a foul, but you know what? She's going to make them take it out of bounds. I'm okay with that because if they go all the way for a layup, that's a big momentum swing. Capacious goes, she's going to feel that one as she hit the deck real hard. That was a thunderous collision. They might want to check, make sure Capacious didn't get her bell rung. Oh, now they're going to change it and say she was shooting. Well, she would have, she may have been planning to shoot, but I don't think she had gotten to the point where she was going to start the arms going up to the basket yet. They will send Jaden Peterson to the foul line as she left the free throw short. Peterson's a 59% free throw shooter. And left that one a little short as Hobie checks out. Now this Abby is Bartolo in. This uh, offensive, this free throw rebound is not a gimme for Garrigan here. They're both going to have to box out well. Capacious 
is going to try to box out the 6-1 Peterson as the shot is up and good. That'll make it 36-24. Bishop Garrigan on top of Dyke New Hartford right now. Jaden Peterson of 11. Peyton Peterson also of 11. As number 11, Molly Joyce has the basketball right now for Bishop Garrigan. To the left to Capacious. Now down into the corner to our left to Montag. Montag tried to pass and she left her pivot foot. That came off the ground and there's a travel. So the Wolverines and Coach Dahl have called off the intensity of the press. They're going to let Molly Joyce not, they're going to let her bring it up off the court. But what they're doing is putting that pressure on the perimeter guards for Garrigan once they do get the ball advanced. Up near half court, it's Ellery Knock. The William Jewell commit as she passes over to the right to Marin Bixby. Down low, Jaden Peterson. Blocked by Crooks. She swallowed that shot. It's right back to Peterson, but she throws it away to Joyce. And here comes Molly Joyce, weaving into the front court. Joyce drifts towards the far side in the corner with 5.24 on the clock. Wraps it into Crooks. Knocked away by Peyton Peterson, and here she comes. Outlet up to Landfair. Behind the defense. She avoids Joyce. Missed the shot wildly. Peterson is there on the cleanup, and she'll put it in for two. Back down to a 10-point game. Big, strong rebound by Peterson. She sent Zoe Montag flying to the floor and Coach Dahl is rallying his team try to cut into this 10-point lead. Five minutes on the clock, quarter number three, 36-26 in favor of Bishop Garrigan. And Bartolo's cross-court feed is knocked away. And here comes Bixby running the floor, avoids Joyce, and this time she got it for two. And here comes the push by Dyke New Hartford. Yep, this is that momentum we talked about. It's happening right now. Can Garrigan answer? These cross-court passes at the top of the key have been getting knocked away by the wingspan. Student second is going crazy right now. Capacious from the lane, missed it. Crooks taps the rebound to herself, and she's blocked! A rejection by Nock, and on a foul. It will go against Abby Capacious, number three on her, and Dyke New Harford has the momentum squarely in their direction right now. They do, Garrigan still got the lead by eight points, but you can feel that momentum shift, and it gave a, it's giving a lot of confidence to these Dyke New Harford players, and Capacious is gonna stay in there with three fouls. This is a 7-0 run right now by Dyke New Harford as Bishop Garrigan was up by 15 moments ago. And Capacious denies the entry pass to Peterson. She cut in front and took it away with the left hand. Well, that is risky by Capacious. That could have been a fourth foul, but Capacious plays at 100 miles per hour no matter what. The knock away from Joyce avoids traffic as she gets it to Capacious. Into the corner to Sasha Olish. Now back to Joyce and a foul. A foul on the pass as Landfair was the guilty party. All right, I'll tell you what. Landfair and Bixby, 6-1 at the top of the key. Uh, they are causing all kinds of problems for these Garrigan guards at the top of the key. That has been the that is the shift that Coach Dahl made at halftime. That's what they've gone with, and it is working so far. Busco will replace Landfair right now for Dyke New Hartford, and we have a whistle and a stoppage. Oh, Coach Schwab is saying uh, Crooks hit the deck there, and uh, someone needs a towel because it's real slippery out there. And Crooks is going to do the mop-up duty on her own here, so she can get that footing down. But there was quite a scrum there at the end of that previous possession there. Capacious ended up getting called for the foul, but before that, there was a lot of contact between Crooks, Peterson, and, and Bixby. Well, Crooks will clean up the floor. Crooks can clean up the rebounds. She can score underneath the basket, and she can, can clean the floor as well. And you've always talked during our broadcast, all the extracurricular activities yeah, she's involved in. She can do anything. Well, that's a new one. 3.58 on the clock. Garrigan up the ball, Capacious, cross-court feed to Joyce. Catches, fires, drills a three-pointer. Nothing but net. Molly Joyce with the hot hand. That is a huge shot by Joyce. Wow. Into Peterson in the post in a double-team sandwich. Avoids Crooks, takes a wide angle, hits it up the side of the backboard, and that ball is out of bounds. Back to Bishop Garrigan. Yeah, it wasn't out when it hit the side of the, the standard, but it landed on the line. That's a good break for Bishop Garrigan. Well, that was a good, that really uh, shut down that big momentum by the Wolverines. Now it feels like the Bears, that three from Joyce really quieted that run. Molly Joyce has it up top, and there's definitely a lower decibel level right now in the crowd following that Joyce three, as you referenced. Allish to the foul line, Capacious. Now outside Bartolo, open for a three-pointer, and there's an air ball. The ball hits Crooks in the face, and Peterson has it on the rebound. Peterson into the front court, two on one, going into Joyce. Peterson off the window, and she got it. 39-30, Peterson now with 15 points. That is Peyton Peterson on the finish. And now three minutes to go in the third quarter. And we'll have a timeout called by Bishop Garrigan head coach Brandon Schwab with 3.02 on the clock. A full timeout, so we'll take that one with Coach Schwab. Bishop Garrigan 39 and at Dyke New Hartford 30 on Hometown Radio, KLGA.
When you need cash on the go, there's no need to pay a surcharge fee with MoneyPass. Iowa State Bank is proud to be part of the MoneyPass network of surcharge-free ATMs found nationwide. Look for the green and blue MoneyPass symbol on over 32,000 ATMs across the nation. Or find an ATM near your vacation spot or travel destination at MoneyPass.com. MoneyPass, another way that Iowa State Bank helps people succeed. Member FDIC. For over 40 years, Northwest Iowa Bone, Joint, and Sports Surgeons have maintained one mission to provide excellence in orthopedic care. Their team of nine physicians offer specialized care in everything from arthroscopic same-day surgery to joint replacement as well as hand and foot surgery and have an orthopedic surgeon on call 24-7. Healthcare isn't about appointments, it's about taking care of people and that's their specialty. Visit Northwest Iowa Bone, Joint, and Sports Surgeons on the web at nwiabone.com. Bishop Gergen leading Dyke New Hartford by nine points. Last time these two teams matched up, the Golden Bears were 0 of 10 on three-pointers. Tonight, Molly Joyce says, nobody can stop me from shooting a three ball. Crooks, quick touch pass to Capacious under the bucket, and it's swatted from behind. Ellery Knock, yet another rejection. She has been a menace in the paint tonight. Oh, crowds love a good rejection. Now in that timeout, the starters were all seated down, but Molly just said, no, well, I'm standing. I want to get back out there and play. So I'm looking at Molly Joyce taking over here this last two minutes. Joyce with it with 13 on the shot clock as she'll head towards the center of the court. Now left, backs up, looking to drive, then flips it to Capacious with seven on the shot clock to the right around the perimeter. Alish has it with four with three with Bartolo. Bartolo with two. Bartolo's going to run out of time. She got it to Alish, and the shot clock has expired. A good defensive possession by Dyke New Hartford. That was great defense on Molly Joyce. They really shut her down there. She was bound to determine to get to the basket, but good defense kept her from doing so. Now Dyke New Hartford with the basketball. They beat Central Line in the state title game last year. Makokina Valley the year before. Off the window, a miss by Jaden Peterson. Ball pinballs out of bounds and goes back to the Golden Bears. Excellent defense by Capacious. She's playing out there with three fouls against Peterson. Peterson had her forearm out, but not enough to draw a charge. And Capacious just shuffled with her and kept her feet moving, stayed vertical. Good D. 39-30, Bishop Garrigan on top as Bartolo's down in the far corner. Back up to the top to Joyce. Joyce behind the back dribble, trying to shake loose of Landfair. She comes left to Olish, now to Capacious, right beneath us to our left. As Capacious goes right to Bartolo of two minutes on the clock. Bartolo splits down the middle, flips it up, and she was looking for Crooks, but that is way out of bounds. All right, Bartolo's got the energy going. She's a little hyped up. This is a big game for a freshman. She did a great decision where she split the seam and got in the lane, but just a little too much energy underneath that pass. It looked like Bartolo got caught halfway in between shooting and passing and tried to do both of them at the same time, which did not work out well. As 1.45 on the clock, a throwaway by the Wolverines, and they can't save it. It is out of bounds back to Bishop Garrigan as Jaden Peterson made the diving attempt. Well, this last minute has kind of been a break for both teams. Neither team playing real well the last minute. Who's going to take over? But this pressure up high by Dyke New Harford is really preventing the pass into Crooks, and it's creating some steals. Joyce flings it across to Bartolo, now back up to Joyce at the edge of the Wolverine logo at midcourt. 1.30 on the clock, Alish for the basketball, wraps the pass over to Joyce, a deep three, and it rims out. Rebound Crooks, Crooks with a follow, she misses. Capacious a third opportunity and gets it back outside to Alish. Alish into Crooks, but it's intercepted as Peterson fronts it Crooks, and here she comes. Peyton Peterson on the push, Peterson into Joyce, off the window, and it's good. Nice try by Joyce, but Pe Peterson too good running that floor. 17 points by Peyton Peterson, and now it's 39-32. Dyke New Hartford eating into that Bishop Garrigan lead. Bartolo with 59 seconds left, comes up top to Joyce, and to the left to Alish. 20 seconds on the shot clock, high post capacious. She'll float and it's blocked. Peterson blocked it, it's into the hands of Crooks and a foul. They had Crooks wrapped up as that'll be a foul on Dyke New Hartford, and that will erase the Good feeling to pick up a block on that play. Crooks and Ellery Knock are kind of laughing. That was kind of a wild sequence. Capacious got stuffed by Knock, but Crooks is right there. Olish bouncing into Capacious. A mid-range jumper, and she swishes it. Yeah, that's a huge shot. Garrigan needed that. Now they just got to clean up their passes. The last thing Joyce said coming out of the timeout, she pleaded with her team, smart passes. 41-32, Bishop Garrigan. 37 seconds left. Peterson in the lane. Flips it outside to Knock. Joyce guarding her on the perimeter with 31 seconds left in the third quarter. Now it's Landfair, handing it off to Jane Peterson. Wants to work against Capacious, handing it off Bixby. Let's it fly, and there's a swish. Marin Bixby hits a huge three. 
Bixby is a 41.6% three-point shooter. She's improved her three-point shooting by 11% since last season, a big part of this Wolverine resurgence on the free ball. Alice just a little step slow, getting there, almost got there in time to block it. Four seconds in the quarter, ball knocked out of bounds, they could not find Crooks inside. She has been blanketed in the post by a couple 6-1 players tonight with good wingspans, and with three and a half seconds left, Garrigan will inbound. Miranda Tyler comes into the game. They'll avoid the foul of Jaden Peterson. Into Capacious with two, with one, to Crooks the foul line. Outside to Aulish, and Bishop Garrigan is out of time. The third quarter is over, and we've got a fight on our hands heading into the fourth. Bishop Garrigan 41, Dyke New Hartford 35 on Hometown Radio KLGA and at the Algona Radio YouTube live stream. High school sports on Hometown and Home Country Radio brought to you by these sports club members. American Glass, for all your glass needs, think American. Farm Bureau Financial Agents, Dave Beisch, Jason Brace, Daniel Foth, and Michael Tull. Kemco Tires, they're all you need to know about tires and service. Weikert Realtors, the 515 agency, a fresh approach to real estate. Feed Mill Coffee Company, where community connects. Iowa Lakes Community College, your community, your college. PMC Advantage Insurance Services, insuring our neighbors for over 80 years. Walker Chiropractic and Wellness, caring for Algona, Sway City, and the surrounding areas with chiropractic, nutritional, and physical therapy services. All proud sponsors of this broadcast. We have a great finish on our hands here at Dyke New Hartford High School as the Wolverines trail Bishop Garrigan 41-35. I'm Tyler Lance, my partner's Beanie Bodie. Beanie, what are a couple big factors here in quarter number four? Well, I don't know what Coach Schwab said, but I know in the previous time out in the third quarter, when they left the huddle, Molly Joyce told all of her fellow guards smart passes, and then they didn't do it. So I'm thinking Molly Joyce is just going to uh, take the ball and split that pressure and take it to the hoop. Dyke New Hartford trying to come back from down by 15 against the Golden Bears as they'll throw it away on the first possession. Capacious had Peterson blanketed along the baseline. Yeah, they almost run the same play that Garrigan runs to Capacious, and I think Capacious knew it. I think she knew it was coming. She's like, I'm just going to face guard this. You're not going to get it. Molly Joyce into the front court. Joyce with 14, Crooks with 19 for Bishop Garrigan. As Capacious is in the lane, deals to Hovey in the corner, lets the three rip, it's short. Joyce sails in for the board and she puts it in. Molly Joyce came out of nowhere. Great board crash. Oh, Capacious and Joyce are all smiles. 43-35, Bishop Garrigan on the right wing, a three ball on the way, Bixby, and that rims out to Crooks. Audie Crooks had a school record, 25 rebounds last time these two teams matched up. Bishop Garrigan had a big rebounding advantage last time, 46-28, but it's looking a little more even tonight on the boards. Capacious at the foul line. She floats, and she bounces it in. The friendly rubber rim for Abby Capacious, and a 10-point Garrigan lead. Here comes Knock. She's looking to push it. She's got Peterson open under the basket and misses her. Knock looking to take it against Joyce instead. She'll come back outside to Landfair. One minute gone in the fourth quarter. Landfair left to Jaden Peterson. Peterson flashes across the foul line, spins towards the right, puts it off the window, and she spun it in against Capacious. Oh, Jaden Peterson is really having a game here. Let's try to get her another foul. Let's drive right at her. But, Peter, go ahead, Tyler. Peterson of three fouls right now. And Mon now Montag doing some good defense. She's going to be guarding Bixby, the three-point shooter on the other, and that's a good matchup to keep track of. Hovey comes left to Joyce. Two players keep their eyes on Joyce, and now to the foul line, Capacious. Outside Montag, lets the three ball go. It's good! Zoe Montag, a deep three, and it's 48-37. With a good closeout hand in her face. Good concentration by Montag. Peterson down low. Peterson against Crooks. Crooks strips the ball away. A great defensive play by Adi Crooks to avoid the foul and force the turnover. What a great start to the fourth quarter by the Bishop Garrigan Bears. Montag over the past three games coming into tonight and hit six of her last nine threes, and she stays hot. She has the ball right now, takes one dribble left and passes back up top to Hovey. Hovey to the foul line, Capacious. Capacious floats again, and she drew the foul. Bishop Garrigan is really feeding Capacious in the high post right now, and she'll shoot two free throws. Well, they had been forcing that ball into Crooks through massive traffic and making some errant passes. And so I think Coach Swap probably said, hey, we've got Abby near the free throw line. Just get it to her. Make them get off of Crooks. Capacious drills the foul shot. 49-37 Bishop Garrigan as they've gotten the lead back up to double digits after Dyke New Hartford had a 14-9 scoring advantage in the third quarter to trim the lead down. Two for two for Capacious. There's a swish. 13-point Garrigan advantage. 
And Coach Dahl wants a timeout with 5.48 on the clock. It is a full 60-second timeout, so we'll take that right with Coach Dahl as Bishop Garrigan is off and running to start the fourth quarter, up 50-37 to over Dyke New Hartford on Hometown Radio, KLGA. More sports club members making these broadcasts possible on Hometown Home Country Radio. Kazooth Regional Health Center, make KRHC your home for health care. North Iowa Appliance Center, Highway 18 East Algona, where they sell the best and service the rest. Tom Eichen Sales, your store in the country, Highway 18 West. Algona Plumbing and Heating, where a good flush always beats a full house. Runky Brothers Full Service, experience the Runky Brothers difference for all of your auto service and repair needs. Purpleding and Void CPAs, they're not just about taxes. Purpleding Excavating Enterprise, let them take care of your grading, excavating, and drainage needs. High V, use the Fuel Saver card, fill your cart, fuel your car. AK's Chrome Kitchen, when you come in, your family. Family. All sports club members bringing you this broadcast. Coming out of the Dyke New Hartford timeout, Bishop Garrigan leads the Wolverines 50 to 37. Beanie, a great start to the fourth quarter for the Golden Bears. Great start. They need to pretend like they're starting the quarter all over again. There's still 548 left in the game, and this is a big defensive stand. They've got Montag on Bixby. I think that's a great decision. Don't let Bixby get hot from the three-point line, and Montag's going to be on her man-to-man. -man. Peterson turns it outside, and Peterson lets the three fly off the pass from Peterson as Crooks rebounds. Peyton Peterson could not knock down the three-pointer. They dared her to shoot it as Peyton Peterson shoots about 22% they're, on three balls. They're giving Montag the baseline on the left side of the floor. They're just giving She's unguarded. Joyce comes left to Montag. Holds the ball and back to the right to Capacious. Top of the key with 5.23 on the clock. In the lane, Crooks. In the post. Off the window, she scores as Peterson goes crashing to the ground. Audi Crooks, 21 points. Bishop Garrigan up 52-37. They have started the fourth quarter, all Golden Bears. Corner pocket three is left short by Bixby, and the rebound is taken by Bishop Garrigan. Okay, this is a big minute. Get to the halfway mark of the fourth quarter, playing strong defense. That's going to send a strong message. Golden Bears have to be clean of the basketball. They've turned it over less than 10 times per game, and they need to take care of the ball down the stretch in the fourth quarter. In the corner, Montag with 4.50 on the clock. Up top, Joyce. Joyce left of the lane, driving in, takes it herself, but left it short, and Peterson has the rebound. Here comes Peyton Peterson on the push. Peterson in the lane, back to the bucket. Spins, gives to Jaden Peterson, and she finishes at the glass. Great ball handling in the open floor by Peyton Peterson. The other Peterson cleans it up. Now Capacious is going to bring the ball up the floor. And they've taken off the pressure that was working so successfully for them at the top of the key. Except for Landfair here is going to be on Joyce. They're leaving Montag wide open right now. She catches the ball. Open for three. Let's it go. And it's off the back of the cup. Rebound is tapped by Peterson. Crooks volleyballs it and she got it. The follows up and good. Audie Crooks doing work on the boards. And it's 54-39. Way to keep that ball alive, Audie. Lanfear brings it up. She's looking for a cutter. Get it back to knock the senior point guard. 4-1 on the clock. Here's the halfway point. Peterson spins back. Crooks and a blocking foul. Crooks spilled to the deck. That will be foul number two against Crooks. Foul number four on Bishop Garrigan. Crooks tried her best to do her acting. She's a good actress. I've seen her on stage a lot. She tries to draw the charge there. No deal. And uh, gets the block foul. That will be Audie's second foul of the game with 23 points. And now the scoring's going to even out. Joyce with 16, Capacious with 10. Into Peterson. A nice inbounds play, but she missed from point blank range. Sasha Olish, Emmy Bartolo, the two freshmen into the ball game for Bishop Garrigan. And the Golden Bears up 54-39 with 3.48 left. Capacious looking inside, takes a couple dribbles towards the right, now flings it back left, Olish. A deep three by the freshman, rims out, and the rebound is tapped to Jaden Peterson. Jaden Peterson into the front court, and here she comes. Over to the far side, Bixby sets herself for a free ball, and she drains it. A big three by Bixby. Yeah, we can't give that up. Bartolo late getting there. She's a 40% three-point shooter. Can't let her be open there. Number one three-point shooter in the conference. And she was too wide open on that possession. Bartolo up top to Capacious with 3.15 on the clock. Big speed of eight points. Bartolo in the corner, eyed the bucket. She's looking to Crooks. She lobs it in. It's over her head and out of bounds. Crooks was blanketed by Peterson and Knock, and that'll be a turnover. Yeah, this game has been a, a level up here for Bartolo and Alesh. Good players. Coach Slob's going to call a timeout. They've got the game down to three minutes to go in the game, and we need to reset here. He's taking a full one. 
A full timeout is called. We'll keep it right here down the stretch as the video streaming sponsors. We'll give a quick thank you to them right now as they're brought to you by Algona State Farm Insurance agent Billy Offerman. Algona Municipal Utilities, where they are community owned for community benefit. High Endeavors, proud supporter of Bishop Garrigan Athletics and Chemna Auto Center, where it's not just about the car, it's about the care. So let me ask you this. If you're Coach Dahl and the Dyke New Hartford Wolverines, are you putting that full court press back on right now? Because you know possessions are going to start getting limited here down the stretch, maybe speeding up the game a little bit. Well, well, I'm not going to put the full court press on uh, because Molly Joyce is so good about breaking it. But I am going to put that soft press they had, kind of their half court press with Lamb Fear and Bixby up top. They were causing all kinds of havoc, especially for any guard not named Molly Joyce uh, handling the ball against them. I would definitely put that back in. And they've had a lot of success just pushing that tempo. Peterson has gone coast to coast a few times against the Bears. And for the rest of the way, if you do a steady diet of Peterson, Peterson, and Bixby shooting the ball, that's their chance to get back in. But they're going to have to get a lot more shots up. And the Garrigan defense doing a good job preventing those shots on goal so far. Well, Dyke New Hartford, they've won 26 games in a row. Their last loss a year ago tomorrow against Bishop Garrigan in the Bishop Garrigan High School Gymnasium. After that, Dyke New Hartford won their final regular season game and first five playoff games by 20 plus points before beating Central Lion 59-52 for the Class 2A title. Tonight, Bishop Garrigan is a couple minutes away from closing it out as driving inside his knock off the glass and there's two. A quick bucket by the Wolverines. 10 point ball game and they will show some full court pressure as Capacious passes to Joyce. Joyce will have to hustle into the front court, and here she comes across the timeline. Joyce driving, has an opening, got to the bucket, and she drew the foul. Molly Joyce saw her opportunity, and she took it. And that's why I just don't like that press against Molly Joyce. They did a good job initially. They inbounded to Capacious. Their chance was to don't let Molly Joyce get the ball back, but they failed. Once Joyce got it back, she's going coast to coast, and now she's at the free throw line. Joyce. A great free throw shooter. She drains the foul shot. She's been over 76% at the charity stripe this season as she now has 17 points. Now Crooks is out there. She's coaching Emmy Bartolo at half court. Crooks has coaching desires in her genes. And uh, she's going to be a coach someday, I predict. Uh, but Audie Crooks right now, the senior, working with Emmy Bartolo, who's, I'm going to say, a third of her size. <laughs> Emmy Bartolo is the smallest player on the floor by far. Good to see that senior freshman working together. 56-44 after the two good Joyce free throws. Peterson attacking into Crooks. She fights it up and it rolls off. Rebound is knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Bishop Garrigan. Now there you go. That's Peterson all the way to the basket against Crooks. Uh, she didn't get the bucket. Didn't get the foul. But they might as well keep going back to that well. From the baseline, they'll get it in. It's knock, knock. We'll draw the foul of 234 on the clock. They got her in a deep position inside, and this is a good opportunity for Dyke New Hartford. You have to score if the clock stopped. Yep, that'll be four on Capacious. And Coach Swab, like we talked earlier, might as well leave her in the game. If she does foul out, then this is a good learning experience of what they're going to do when Capacious is out. You can simulate those things in practice, end of game situations, and you don't have X player. And they could do it for real here if Capacious picks up her fifth. 56-45, Bishop Garrigan on top after the made free throw. The second one rattles into the drain as well. 10-point game, 56-46. Here comes the pressure. Capacious can run the baseline if she wants, and she'll find Joyce. Joyce in a triple team in the corner. She gets it out to Capacious up the far side of the court. Now Montag. Montag into Crooks. Crooks one-on-one -on -one under the bucket, and that's an easy picking for Audie Crooks. Oh, one-on-one -on -one is easy. Here comes Knox. She's pushing that tempo. Knock on the burst, into the corner, Peterson wide open. She'll slowly work in against Crooks. Bodies Crooks up, goes at a wide angle, missed it off the window, balls out of bounds, back to Bishop Garrigan. You know, that says a lot about Peterson's game. She had a wide open three-pointer in the corner, and she did not take it despite her team being down 12. She wanted to go in and go one-on-one -on -one against Crooks. That's a, that's a tough decision right there. She actively sought out the contact, too, against Crooks as Joyce heads into the lane, floats it to Crooks. Crooks open again, and there's two more. A great find by Molly Joyce, and a finish by Audie Crooks with two minutes left. Inside, Peterson. Crooks with a knockaway, and she has the ball. They could not find Peterson cutting to the basket. Now 155 left. Garrigan up 60 to 46. That was so pretty what Molly Joyce did to knock. She just toyed with the guard. She made her think she was shooting, and then as soon as Knock turned towards her, she flipped it to Crooks. That was pretty. Bartolo, near side of the court with 141 left. Time is a major friend of the Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears right now. 
Joyce will back it up towards half court. 12 on the shot clock. Joyce burning and turning the clock. Capacious with eight seconds. Hands it off to Bartolo of seven seconds. Now it's Joyce with five on the shot clock. Lost the defender. Got to the bucket. Scoops it up and missed. Crooks the follow. And she got it. Audi Crooks the big follow. 62-46 Bishop Garrigan. The two seniors started the game with the first two buckets. Why not have a pretty sequence right there? Crooks is pumped. So is Montag. Joyce is smiling. And Joyce doesn't smile that much. They're having fun out there. A timeout is called as we'll keep it right here. If 116 left, the Bishop Garrigan fans and many of them making the trip tonight to Dyke New Hartford High School, a big two-hour road trip, giving their team a standing ovation. They can feel their team closing their grip on tonight's ball game. Beanie, I'll tell you what, Golden Bears, they saw the big run from Dyke New Hartford. The Wolverines got it down to six by the end of the third quarter. And how you respond when you start the fourth quarter really says a lot. Golden Bears, they have dominated this fourth quarter. They have stood that big push, and now they're, they're in position for a huge win right before the playoffs. I believe the word that coaches use for the Bear team in this fourth quarter is poise. They really weathered the storm there by Dyke New Hartford, and they came out that fourth quarter and played under control. They executed their offense right off the bat there. They went to Capacious a couple times in the lane. Then they went right back to Joyce and Crooks. And uh, that was all she wrote once they got those. But what was really impressive there was uh, those last couple of series when Dyke New Hartford was getting a little desperate and needed some turnovers defensively and had to take some risks and put a little pressure on the defenders. How quickly Molly Joyce just dissected them. Uh, just a surgeon with the ball offensively and find shooters wherever she can. That's a nice science word, as I can tell. You still have your science classroom today on your mind, but that's a perfect word because Joyce saw Crooks in a couple easy one-on-one -on -one matchups and a state leader in assists delivered. And she's also picked her spots to drive as well as Peterson has the ball knocked away and Jaden Peterson will turn it over. Uh, Joyce with the knockaway. Now here's Molly Joyce into the front court. She'll hand it off to Abby Capacious as we're down to 60 seconds left in this ball game. Golden Bears up 62-46, and they are going to be feeling great about themselves heading into the playoffs. Joyce spins left. She'll step back, and she'll burn some more clock as she flips it right to Capacious. Into the corner to Montag with 47 seconds left in the ball game. Golden Bears want to use most, if not all, of the shot clock and just continue to add insurance. Joyce to the left. Into the lane, she'll stop. She'll rise for a jumper, and she left it short of 36 seconds. Rebound is taken by Jaden Peterson. And now on the push, it's Knock. Knock had it knocked away by Joyce, and a foul called on the Bishop Garrigan Sr. You know, Knock is a, a player that you can see just gives teams nightmares. She's a 6'1 point guard. She's very good with the ball. She's very fast in the open floor. Uh, she is a fantastic player, and the Bears did a really nice job keeping her scoring down. In the corner, it's Knock. Let's a three-pointer rip. It's off the heel, and it's rebounded by Bartolo of 22 seconds left, and the Golden Bears can feel it. Dyke New Hartford is backing off. The Golden Bear half the crowd rises to their feet as Molly Joyce will dribble the remaining time away. 62-46 is the score right now. The Golden Bears wanted a challenge. They got a challenge, and they rose to the occasion tonight. Bishop Garrigan will hand it Dyke New Hartford, their first loss in their home court since 2019. A huge road win by the Golden Bears. They got their state championship caliber test tonight, and they rose to the challenge. 62-46, the final score. They withstood the run, and a dominant fourth quarter performance seals it tonight by Bishop Garrigan. Well, we will take a quick timeout. We'll come back to wrap it up next on Hometown Radio KLGA and the Algona Radio YouTube live stream. When you need cash on the go, there's no need to pay a surcharge fee with MoneyPass. Iowa State Bank is proud to be part of the MoneyPass network of surcharge-free ATMs found nationwide. Look for the green and blue MoneyPass symbol on over 32,000 ATMs across the nation. Or find an ATM near your vacation spot or travel destination at MoneyPass.com. MoneyPass, another way that Iowa State Bank helps people succeed. Member FDIC. With over a decade of experience, Jake Ingalls Electric is here to handle any electrical job you could possibly have. From anything agricultural related, to complex commercial wiring, to something simple like installing a new outlet in your home. Jake Ingalls Electric does it all. Have your wiring done right and call Jake at 515-320-4286. Jake Ingalls Electric, shockingly good service.
big statement made tonight by the Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears as they make the two-hour road trip to Dyke New Hartford High School. And the Golden Bears rise to the challenge with a 62-46 victory. The first time in 1,158 days that Dyke New Hartford has lost inside of their home gymnasium. I'm Tyler Lance alongside my partner, Beanie Bodie. The Golden Bears did it with a big fourth quarter. Bishop Garrigan had what once was a 15-point lead, cut down to six by the end of the third. But it was a 21-11 scoring advantage in the fourth that did the job for the Golden Bears and will send them home with a victory heading into the playoffs. Beanie, Bishop Garrigan has tested themselves all the time. A really tough schedule the past two years, and they want to play teams like Dyke New Hartford. They want adversity. They got it. They got exactly what they wanted. They rose to the challenge tonight, and they were so composed in quarter number four. Absolutely. There was a moment there where it looked like the momentum was going to swing, and everyone loves a big comeback in basketball, and it looked like Dyke New Hartford was maybe mounting a big comeback, but it was the poise by those Bishop Garrigan seniors especially and their leadership down the stretch really just makes everyone feel comfortable. You saw last year in the state tournament where Crooks and Joyce, you know, and things got tense and said, hey, everybody, we can play this. Don't, don't, don't change on us. We, we can play our game. And they did that in the fourth quarter. They really played their game. They got everything that they do well. They got Crooks down low on some nice passes. Joyce took it to the hoop a couple times. They found Montag out wide for a three-pointer that she hit. They are moving the ball really, really well. And Capacious had those jump shots inside. It was just a full team effort in the fourth quarter. Everyone did what they do best in this system that they're working through and just a really well played fourth quarter and uh, Tyler like you said it could have gone the other way when that momentum shifted uh, you know there were some Bear fans over on the far side of the gym that were squeezing a little tighter no doubt about it, and that's the thing Bishop Garrigan's not used to. When the Golden Bears get up by 15 against just about everyone else, the opposing team kind of rolls over, and you say, well, it's over. This is the number one team in the state, and we just can't keep up. But, of course, that is not the case because Dyke New Hartford, they're also the number one team in the state. They have that state championship DNA flowing through their blood as they've won back-to-back 2A -back titles. And, like you said, they made that push. They got back down to six. But Molly Joyce, really, an MVP performance in tonight's game. She had 18 points, numerous assists, and, really, she was the floor general for Bishop Garrigan breaking the full court press in the first half and then distributing the rock in the fourth quarter finding the open players finding crooks in one-on-one -on -one matchups all when it mattered the most yeah as a fan I'm really happy for Molly Joyce you can see towards the end of the season there there's a lot of focus on crooks getting that big record that 50 point game and that's all made possible by by Joyce and company and crooks is the first to tell everyone but you just knew like Molly Joyce, she missed a couple shots. You could see that she was a little flustered. And to see her come out tonight and just play her game to the max, handled the ball against taller, athletic players with big wingspans. She handled the ball so well. She played very smart. She uh, encouraged her teammates. She led the team in timeouts. She was positive, and she's coming out of the locker room right now with her friend Ashlyn Hovey, and they're all smiles. Couldn't be happier for Molly Joyce uh, having a great game this evening. No doubt about it. And I'll tell you what, the Dyke New Hartford Wolverines are going to be a problem for Class 2A in this year's playoffs because when I look at this team, I see Peyton Peterson, one of the most aggressive post players in the state. This is the only time this season where I've seen anyone look to actively attack into Crooks and be the initiator when you're going against Crooks. Most players will see Crooks, they'll turn it back outside, and they'll settle for the outside shot. Bishop Garrigan gave Peyton Peterson the outside shot all night long, but she looked to attack into Crooks. She had her own moments. She had 17 points, but down the stretch in the fourth quarter, Crooks ended up getting the upper hand defense defensively, and that was part of Garrigan closing out this game as well. Yeah, both Petersons. If you want to follow this Dyke New Harford team, assuming they're going to make the state tournament, and when they get down to Wells Fargo, if you want to follow them, they'd be an interesting team to follow now that you've seen them as a Bears fan watching the YouTube live stream at home. But you see Peterson and Peterson and Knock, you're going to see those three young women uh, probably get themselves on an all-tournament team because they are players. They played really well. Uh, they have to tip their hat to Crooks. I mean, uh, uh, you know, they, they're they seeing a great player in Audie Crooks, and they went at her with all they got, you know, and they they got a taste of what everyone gets when they play against Audie Crooks. She's dominant, and she's smart, and she plays the game, and uh, she's a great competitor, and she's fun to play against. You know, she shares smiles with their opponents throughout the game when where they're playing against each other, and, you know, they're bodying up each other. They're they're pushing and shoving against each other, and they're doing it in a competitive, sportsmanlike way, and, and it's fun to see them all smiles. But you can follow those those players all through the tournament. And, you know, Tyler, uh, even the crowd here has a lot of respect for Crooks. You know, people, they want calls against Audie Crooks all the time, 
because they think, oh, geez, she's, she's got to be fouling. Like, she's battling for rebounds. She's pushing. She's shoving. Everybody pushes and shoves for rebounds down there. And, and uh, you think, oh, someone, would you please call Audie for a foul? But then if you think about it or look at it on film, you see, like, oh, I guess she never really fouled there. She just went up strong and tipped the ball around and got her hands on it and went back up for – she didn't foul anybody. She's just a good player. And uh, even the crowd realized that as it went on. They wanted fouls at the beginning, but by the end of the game, they're like, wow, just hats off to Audie Crooks. And it was nice, nice atmosphere in the gym tonight. Great competitive game. No doubt about it. It was a really a high IQ basketball crowd as they understood what was going on. And they've seen a lot of good basketball played inside of this gymnasium over a long stretch of time. Of course, Coach Bruce Dahl has won over 500 games of Dyke New Hartford, including three state championships. And they are a major contender to win their third championship in a row this year. So don't forget about that. If you're going down to Wells Fargo and Dyke New Hartford happens to make it, maybe watch a couple of their games too, because this is a team that really, really has a strong chance of winning a state championship. But the 26 game winning streak is over. It started a loss to Bishop Garrigan, it'll end with a loss to Bishop Garrigan, as that's just kind of the way it goes. Garrigan, they play in 1A, so maybe people around the state don't necessarily realize what they have all the time, but I think Audie Crooks translates, Molly Joyce translates, good three-point shooting all around translates, and really just tough, scrappy defense. Garrigan's not afraid to play man-to-man. -man. That translates as well. Yeah, they altered their defense a couple times. They went man-to-man -man when they needed to keep Bixby from getting hot from the three-point line. They put Zoe Montag on. Uh, when they went man-to-man, -man, they put the very tough Capacious on their very tough Peterson. So, yeah, they can go man-to-man. -man, they can go zone. They got a lot of support. Uh, the parents are sticking around. Uh, they've got some, I see uh, Grand Jeanette down there, a player from last year's team. You know, they've got a lot of, a lot of people supporting the Bears here. I know a lot of people are listening uh, in Des Moines, all over the place. A lot of Bear fans all over the place are tuning into these girls to see what the next step is, and I think it's going to be a positive step. And, uh, you know, you look at some of the parents down there, you know, they have hauled these girls to a lot of tournaments all over the place from the time they were youngsters. It can be a local tournament down the road in West Hancock, Garner, or it might be even a long ways away. I know some of these kids go play in Milwaukee sometimes in the summer on AAU teams and things like that. So this is the modern sport, sport uh, era. Kids put a lot, a lot of time into this game, and you want to see it come to fruition because if it doesn't, you kind of wonder, what's all this for? But it's really fun to see the success of the Bishop Garrigan girls basketball team. Well, we were wrapping up by looking at a couple quick scoring numbers from tonight's game. Audie Crooks had 29 points to lead the way. Molly Joyce, 18, at Abby Capacious, 10 for the Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears. Dyke New Hartford had Peyton Peterson of 17, Jaden Peterson of 15, and Marin Bixby with 8. Both these teams are poised to make deep playoff runs. It would not be surprising to see both of them at Wells Fargo Arena, both trying to defend their state championship wins. So the old saying, iron sharpens iron. We will find out if that is the case after tonight's game. So a well-needed time on both sides and Bishop Garrigan comes out on top 62 to 46 behind a dominant fourth quarter performance. Big thank you to all our video streaming sponsors here on the YouTube page. They include Algona State Farm Insurance agent Billy Offerman, Algona Municipal Utilities, High Endeavors and Chemna Auto Center. Also Greg Penning and Company certified public accountants who sponsor our scoreboard graphic on the screen. Big thank you to everyone back at the studio. Big thank you to everyone tuning in here on the YouTube stream and along the radio dial. This has been a hometown radio K LGA Sports Production. Once again, final score, Bishop Garrigan 62, Dyke New Hartford 46.